in the auto capital of America, Bowling Green's Josh Harris, is the engine, the epicenter, the ignition, and transmission for the Falcons as they put the pedal to the metal in the Motor City. And Jason Wright of Northwestern, he's the Wildcats' wheels, the axles, the spokes, bumper to bumper, his ingenuity and continuity have Northwestern at the forefront of the assembly line. The Wildcats seeking their first bowl victory in nearly half a century. Conference pride is on the line. It's the showdown in Motown. Northwestern Bowling Green next. Inside Ford Field in Motown, Detroit. It's the seventh edition of the Motor City Bowl in the second meeting all time between the Northwestern Wildcats coming in at six and six out of the Big Ten and Bowling Green out of the Mid-American Conference at 10-3, and, and here come the Northwestern Wildcats with a fast and furious finish to end the season, winning four out of their last six games and trying to disprove all notions about whether they belong in a bowl game. That is their motivation today. And Bowling Green out of the Mid-American Conference, a conference long shunned but shunned no more, trying to gain more respect for the conference today. The kickoff is next. City Bowl. It's Northwestern against Bowling Green. The last two times, last time these two teams met, they put up almost 100 points on the scoreboard. And the Motor City, a couple of teams that are going to be trying to find and depress that accelerator early and often. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe joining us in just a few seasons. Greetings from all of us at ESPN to all of you at home. Now, Bob, let's talk about Bowling Green quarterback Josh Harris. He doesn't live in the land of major hype and big billboards at Times Square, but through sheer talent, he's forced the spotlight to shine brightly on him this year. Well, Mark, Greg Colby, Northwestern's defensive coordinator, is playing against Josh Harris. He says it's best. He simply calls him the franchise. He knows for Northwestern to have a chance to win today, they must control him. But that's easier said than done because Josh Harris attacks you in so many ways. He can throw it. He has 24 passing touchdowns this year. He can run it. He has 12 rushing touchdowns this year. Mark, every week, Josh Harris has a big old target on his back. But every week, he steps up to the challenge. Rewriting the Bowling Green school record book. On the other side of the field, we have a team equally almost as prolific offensively. But they do it a different way, running the ball a lot. Jason Wright and Noah Heron, a great duo in the backfield. Mark Northwestern has a simple philosophy. Get your best 11 players on the field and give your best players the football. Jason Wright, Noah Heron, number 18 and number 33. They play as running backs. When Northwestern goes to a one-back set, they play wide receiver. Jason Wright, he's the featured running back. Back-to-back 1,200-yard -back seasons. Noah Heron, he's had 400-yard games, but he's also a receiver and a blocker. Mark, get ready to get used to calling number 18 and number 33. They're going to do a lot of things for this Northwestern offense today. And their head coach, Randy Walker, is very familiar with the Mid-American Conference, having a lot of history there. For more, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, Mark, Northwestern's coach, Randy Walker, grew up in the MAC. He was a player and then a coach at Miami University. He said he has told his Northwestern team, we are the underdogs going to this game. Don't think that the Big Ten has an automatic right to win this. He knows how hard Bowling Green will fight. In fact, Bowling Green went into Northwestern two years ago and knocked off the Wildcats by one point in the last seconds of the game. He's told his kids, you're the underdogs. You're going to have to scrap and fight for everything we get today to get a win. All right, Holly, that means uh, both teams playing the old respect theme on their respective sides of the field today. Northwestern won the toss to Fernie the second half. Bowling Green will receive Huffman to kick off. And back deep, it'll be B.J. Lane and Cole Magner for the Falcons. This is going to be Lane. Lane still on his feet. Great effort out to the 31-yard line where he's finally tackled, and that's where Josh Harris will take the range of the Bowling Green offense. Harris, the 
son of ML Harris, the former NFL player with the Cincinnati Bengals, 6'3", 225 pounds, a senior. Let's take a look at the backs and receivers. We talked about uh, uh, the receivers. Uh, Cole Magner was one of the guys back on kickoff return, uh, a multi-sport star, and Sharon has had a hot hand. Let's well, shoot. Cole Magner's going to catch a bunch of balls, Mark, but keep an eye on Charles Sharon, number one. If they can match him up, take advantage of a size differential, Northwestern short corners. P.J. Pope starting it back. Five wide receivers on first and ten. Passes complete out near the 40-yard line. Charles Sharon working on Marvin Ward. Let's take a look at that offensive line for the Falcons, led by Scott Merskowski, a first-team All-Mac selection. Working up against this defensive front. A couple of changes up front for the uh, Northwestern squad. Mark, you see Barry Cofield, 300 pounds. He was a defensive end, maybe the biggest in the country. He moves inside the defensive tackle. Harris on a quarterback predetermined run out near the 45. And linebackers very active for Northwestern. Tim McGarrickle, the uh, leading tackler, a fifth-year senior, Pat Durr, a big contributor, too. And some changes in the secondary. Bryce and Hines starting at safety. Backus and Ward on the corners. First down and 10 for Bowling Green, and it's picked off at the 45. McGarrickle with the pick, Brian Hines with the pick. And that's the first big break of the game. It was tipped by Steve Sanders. And Mark Brian Hines, number 21, two interceptions in their last game against Illinois. Here you see the ball bounces up in the air. Brian Hines, they call him the garbage man, Mark. <laughs> because he's always cleaning up around those piles. That time he cleaned up and was recipient of a tip or tip pass by the offensive player. And Northwestern subsequently taking over in good field position. That was Hines' fifth pick of the season. Bazinet quarterback almost brought down, fires incomplete at the 45. Britt Bazinet, a 6'2", 200-pound sophomore, had troubles with uh, his interception and Completion ratio this year through 12 picks. Backs and receivers. We talked about the two prolific backs, Wright and Heron, and Kunle Patrick is approaching an NCAA record with consecutive catches. And Wright and Heron introduced as running backs, Mark. But here you see them in a one-back set. Noah Heron actually out there at receiver. Inside handoff to Jason Wright. Down to the 47-yard line. Let's take a look at that offensive line. For Northwestern, Trey Essex at the left tackle. Trevor Reese was freshman All-American this year. And Zach Streif, one of the biggest human beings I've seen, number <laughs> 63, 6'7", 258. Good news, all five of these offensive linemen back next year for Northwestern. And Mitchell Crossley getting the starting assignment up front at the defensive end for Bowling Green. Nose of the ball resting at the 47. Bazinet. Incomplete through it behind Roger Jordan at the 38-yard line. Take a look at the linebackers now for Bowling Green. They've had some changes there. Mark Daniel Sales was the starter of the first five games. He was injured. He is back now, which means T.J. Carswell, who was the outside linebacker, goes back to his original position of safety. Also, Keon Newsom goes from safety to corner. A lot of changes in that secondary after the Miami game in which Ben Roethlisberger torched them. Huffman punting, not one of his better efforts. He'll try and get it inside the 20. It's fielded there. Sharon out to the 27-yard line. And Bowling Green will have its second offensive sequence coming up. And we're going to take a break. Underway here, the seventh edition of the Motor City Bowl. Josh Harris going to try and keep his offense on the field after throwing the interception the last time around. 13-11 to go in the first period. We'll be back right after this. Day at 8. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Welcome back, everyone, to Detroit and Ford Field. The Bowling Green and Northwestern. Zeros on the scoreboard. First down and 10 for the Falcons at their own 27-yard line. They threw an interception on their last possession. That's Cole Magner in motion. Harris, complete to Magner, gets out over the 35 and brought down at the 36-yard line. Mentioned that the last and only other meeting between these two teams resulted in quite a shootout as Bowling Green rallied with 29 
29 fourth quarter points, Bob, to come back and uh, really was a coming out party for Harris. Unbelievable game, Mark. And Bowling Green had 618 yards in that game. And really, it was a game that was scheduled because of the September 11th tragedy. Uh, Northwestern canceled their game with Navy. Bowling Green was supposed to go down to Columbia and play South Carolina. They rescheduled and played each other late in the season in Evanston. Second down and one. Harris incomplete. His intended receiver, Charles Sharon, took off downfield. It may have been mixed communications there. And uh, Greg Brandon, the first-year head coach at Bowling Green, his 10 wins, by the way, are the most ever by the first-year coach in D1A. And Greg was the offensive coordinator under Urban Meyer and really is responsible for this spread offense. And in fact, Mark, we'll talk about it later. The first thing Greg Brandon did when he came to Bowling Green three years ago as the offensive coordinator, he went and visited Randy Walker in Northwestern to find out about the spread. Third down and one for Josh Harris. Has the first down and still on his feet. On to Northwestern side of the field. Tackled by Brian Hines and Josh Harris can hurt you so many different ways, picking up 16. Mark, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Just snap the ball to the quarterback. Everybody zone block with the lead blocker and let a 235-pound slash quarterback running back take off and run the football. There you see him run through the arm tackle of Pat Durr, number three. Interesting in this game, Mark, Northwestern playing a three-man front, a 3-3-5 three, three, defense, something they've not done a lot of this year. Handed off this time to P.J. Pope. And Pope with a nice gain out to the 41-yard line. McGarrigal making the tackle on that play. And, Bob, what about that change in defensive schemes for Northwestern? What are the pluses and minuses of that? What does it do? Mark, first of all, Northwestern normally a four-down team, but they felt like it's a little bit too easy to identify where the shades are or which side the defense is sliding to in the prototypical four-man front. So see, here you see them in a three-man front, and they're going to use these linebackers to give Josh Harris different looks. See how Bowling Green counters offensively. They hand it off. And Pope lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. For more on the Bowling Green offense, let's go to Holly. Well, Coach, as you mentioned, Greg Brandon of Bowling Green did go to Northwestern in 2000 and study that offense. They did it because they knew they had a running quarterback in Josh Harris, similar to Northwestern's running quarterback in Zach Kustoff. He knows this offense inside and out. And ironically, Northwestern has changed their offense a little bit. Bazinet not quite the runner. They're going more of a two-back set, and they are doing a little bit of different things than Bowling Green. So Bowling Green looks like Northwestern two years ago. Third down and three. Harris complete to Magner at the 35-yard line. Cole Magner, a two-sport star at Bowling Green University. He was actually the starting guard for the second half of the basketball season last year, and he will be joining Dan Dockage's group team January 3rd as they play Eastern Michigan. Mark, if you don't see this very often, that AK right there out of Alaska. Not many guys in college football out of Alaska. But hey, this guy had 13 catches against Ohio State, 168 yards, eight catches against Purdue. And that last time these two teams played in 2001 had the two-point conversion reception to win the game. Looking for a big day today. That pass incomplete. Intended for number 12, Steve Sanders. Broken up nicely by Brian Hines. Brian Hines is uh, figured prominently in the second half of the season in that secondary for the Wildcats. Came into Northwestern originally as a walk-on. He's really done well for himself. Well, he mentioned two big interceptions against Illinois in the last game, and probably the turning point of this season had a big interception for Northwestern in the end zone against Indiana, a game they hung on to win in overtime. Second down and 10. Harris fires a little bit high and behind his intended receiver. That was Magner. It'll be third down coming up. And Mark, right there, I think you're going to see what NFL scouts want to see and are a little bit concerned about with Josh Harris. No question he's big enough, strong enough. I think has a strong enough arm as far as velocity, but is he accurate enough to stand in that huddle and complete those mid-range passes? Sets up a big third and ten right here. Here we go on the ninth play of the drive. Set up a screen. 
Pope out of bounds, short of the first down, run down by the big defensive lineman, Luis Castillo. And it'll be fourth down. Now, Bowling Green has a pretty good field goal guy in Sean Suisa. Made 16 out of 24 kicks on the year. But Mark, they also have a pretty good threat right here, running and throwing in number five, Josh Harris. Look for look for Bowling Green. Go empty, spread them out. Always the threat of run with Josh Harris in the backfield. 14 to 22 on fourth downs this year. Looks like Northwestern straight man-to-man -man coverage. Mark coming after him on the blitz. Harris under heat and sacked back at the 42 by Lauren Howard. The honorable mention all Big Ten selection at defensive end. So Greg Brandon gambles. And it fails to pay off. That's the 19th sack for Northwestern this season, the eighth for Howard. Mark, when you go empty, you have five linemen. Northwestern brought six rushers and had one more than Bowling Green could account for. And you see number 66, Warren Howard, the best defensive player on Northwestern's football team. That's his eighth sack of the year. First down and 10 coming back the other way at the 40-yard line for the Wildcats. Jason Wright found a nice seam up the middle, running between the tackles out to the 48-yard line with 10 and a half minutes to go in the first period. Jason Wright led the Big Ten in scoring this year. Ran for almost 1,200 yards. Probably Northwestern's second favorite play. You see the big offensive tackle, Streif pulling around on the rat play. He's really like the lead blocker in a two-back set. And that's 265 pounds pulling around there, Mark. Here they go on another running play out to Bowling Green's side of midfield at the 48. That was Noah Herring the other time. Herring, uh, 5'11", junior. The two of them are roommates, and uh, Jason Wright and Noah Herring uh, have a very close relationship and get along well, uh, despite the fact that they're competing for the same amount of touches and the same job. A lot of competition there, Mark. There's only one football. Both these guys want to carry it. Here you see him in split back shotgun. On first and 10, the option. Heron got hit, but got a couple yards after contact and let the defender know about it. Well, folks, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN tonight at 8.30 Eastern, California, from the Pac-10 facing Virginia Tech from the Big East. And the inside bowl, the Bearcats are the only team to defeat top-ranked USC this season. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. That's the Cal Bears, actually. Second down and five. Pazine keeps it himself. Brought down near the line of scrimmage at the 42. About three yards short of the first down. Brian Gardner making the stop. And Mark, you're going to get a clinic. Fans at home today, a clinic on the spread running game by both teams. And to be quite honest, the spread running game is a finesse running game. Not a lot of people knocking anybody off the line of scrimmage. It's all based on shades and a lot of those quarterback read plays right there, reading the intention of the defensive end. Well, throughout the course of the evening, that red line will demark the line of scrimmage. We'll be using it on third down. Jason Wright carrying the ball. It didn't appear as if he got to the first down marker. Ryan Newble making the tackle on the play. And Mark, we saw that red line on that field. I might be old school, but you better win that red line. <laughs> or you don't even think about that yellow line that's the first down marker. Whether you're spread offense or not, you better be able to block somebody and knock them off the ball. Here Northwestern going for it on fourth and about two. Northwestern hasn't kicked a lot of field goals this season. Bazine on the option pitch. Heron has the edge. Noah Heron. Great cutback. Touchdown, Wildcats. Noah Heron got the edge, courtesy of a couple of good blocks by his receivers downfield. And scores from 40 yards out. An added dimension to Northwestern spread offense, Mark. The two-back option game. Excellent block, as you mentioned, by Kunle Patrick, the wide receiver downfield. You can't convert any better or bigger on fourth down than what they just did. That was the fourth rushing touchdown this season for Heron. 
as the Wildcats coming in at 500 on the season, but they did play a very tough schedule, proving that they were worthy on this play. We'll be back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Motor City Bowl, presented by the Chrysler Pacifica, well beyond the SUV, and in part by City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. And by 1010-987. Give it a try. On the shores of the Detroit River, Look at Detroit, a glow at night as Noah Heron put the Northwestern Wildcats up 7-0. A scoring drive that started after Bowling Green was unable to convert on fourth down. And they scored subsequently on fourth down, Northwestern did. Huffman kicking off. This one nine yards deep, and Bowling Green will start off on its own 20-yard line. Let's take one more look at that great touchdown run. Mark, I want to point out a couple things. First, Bowling Green brings their strong safety, T.J. Carswell, as the blitzer. And he's the widest rusher. He should take the pitch. The second thing, Kunale Patrick is going to get a great block. So when they run the option and pitch it, the strong safety should have been on the pitch back because he is the widest man on the field. So right here, you see T.J. Carswell, two men on the quarterback. Excellent block by Kunale Patrick. Another block downfield by Roger Jordan, number four. And these wide receivers in this spread offense, Mark, half the block. They only threw the ball nine times against Illinois, but an excellent devised scheme right there, but a broken assignment by T.J. Carswell, the strong safety from Bowling Green. Let's see if Josh Harris can counter. Hands it off to B.J. Lane on first and ten. Out near the 23-yard line. But down up front by David Thompson. You know, back to Northwestern, people talk about Oh, they're six and six. Why are they eligible to play in a bowl game? Well, keep in mind that seven of the 12 opponents that they played this year are going to bowl games, so they played a pretty tough schedule. And Mark, you talk about the Big Ten as we look at that. Northwestern, obviously a member. Eight bowl teams from the Big Ten, four in BC, four in the BCS top 15. So they've done it playing a great schedule week to week. Pass underneath complete at the 27-yard line. Out of the backfield, that was B.J. Lane tackled by Marvin Ward. And Mark, I'm going to make a statement right now, and I hope Trev Alberts is listening oh, back okay. in Bristol because I know he's going to agree Get with Get ready this. for this one. You notice all these points in bowl games. I watched that game last night, Hawaii and uh, Houston. Poor defense, I think, as a result of all these spread offenses spread out all across the field. Nobody can tackle anymore. Huh. And there you see the red line. And bottom line in football, you better control this red line right here or don't even think about getting to that yellow line. That's the line of scrimmage. Here's Harris. Harris got the first down, runs out of bounds at the 37. It'll be first and 10 for Bowling Green, the West Division champs out of the mat. Again, Mark, playmakers make plays. Hard to stay in your rush lanes. They're trying to spy right there. Had one of their defensive tackles in position, but he can't slide and contain Josh Harris. That's pretty simple football. Spread everybody out. Let the quarterback run the ball. But poor defensive play, particularly in this bowl season, as a result of so many schemes spreading people out. You don't want to be a defensive coordinator these days. That pass incomplete. Looked like a broken route intended for Cole Magner. It'll be second down and 10. Josh Harris was adamant about attending a big-time college and being able to play quarterback especially, so he chose uh, Bowling Green, although he did play running back his first season except for the very last game, and, uh, boy, it's been no looking back ever since that point. Mark, all I question about this guy is accuracy. Accuracy. There he had Cole Manger up the seam, didn't complete it. Can he throw those mid-range passes with a high enough completion average? The NFL guys are watching. Here he is under heat. Magner made the catch up at the 44. About four yards short of the first down. We're here in Detroit. The Motor City Bowl. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down to the field. Northwestern out of the Big Ten taking on the MAC West Division champs from Bowling Green. In the first quarter, it's third down and four to go. And, uh, 
season's greetings from all of us here at ESPN to all of you at home. That's a bad looking beard on that Santa. Santa's got to he get must have got that <laughs> day after sale, Mark. That was a knockdown price on that beard, man. Somebody. <laughs> Flea Market Santa. Again, we see that red line. Look at the separation between the offensive and defensive linemen. Defensive linemen crowd the red line. Offensive linemen back off it. Complete to B.J. Lane. And he got the first down out in the 50-yard line. And just joining us, the key play of the game so far came on this fourth down conversion. The option fits to Noah Heron. And he went 40 yards for the score, courtesy of a good downfield block by Quinlay Patrick. That is the game's only score. Northwestern getting the ball. The result of uh, Green unable to convert on its fourth down. Andy Walker's team really turned it around the midpoint of the season after the overtime win against Indiana. Again, Bowling Green empty, just spreading Northwestern from sideline to sideline. Harris has time. Lobbed it up for Magner, and it's incomplete at the 34. Good pressure up front by Northwestern and Pat Durr. The second down and 10. Mark, we look at Pat Durr right there, second leading tackler, 48th game he's played in. Came back from a serious, serious knee injury he had against Air Force two years ago. Actually, he plays the mic in their four-man front. He plays outside linebacker in this 3-3-5 defense. That's why you see him rushing so much in this football game. He's actually an outside linebacker today. Bob, uh, looking at second down and 10 now. Handed off to B.J. Lane from Harris, and uh, Harris, uh, a husband and a pretty devoted one, isn't he, Holly Rowe? That's right. Josh Harris got married this offseason because his girlfriend, Tammy, was graduating from Ohio State where she was a high jumper. They didn't want to live together, but she frankly needed a place to live, so they decided to get married. She's here at the game today, and I said, have you helped Josh at all with any track skills, any running? She said, oh, no, I don't mess with that. I'm just a high jumper. I let him do what he does on the field. <laughs> He's a quiet guy to a fault. Got married and came back to school. Really didn't tell anybody about it. Third down and 12. Mark, and he's going to have some time here. Northwestern rushing three. Keep an eye on that red line because he's going to scramble around right here. Harris looking up top, going downtown. Incomplete broken up at the seven-yard line. Intended for Charles Sharon, and uh, Marvin Ward was there to make the play. Marvin Ward with three picks on the season, almost had one there. And Bowling Green wanted to match Charles Sharon up, but they wanted to do it on Jeff Bacchus right here. You see the ball under thrown. Good job by Marvin Ward right there, throttling down and then getting his hands on the football. Charles Sharon wanted interference. I think that's a good no call, though. Let him play. I'm with you on that. Nate Fry into punt, averaging almost 40 yards per punt this year. And Finlay Patrick standing on his own 16-yard line. We thought we'd see Mark Fillmore back returning punts for Northwestern. He's back from an injury he had late in the season. And this is a great coverage punt right here. Patrick fields it at the 7. Passing on the fair catch and brought down at the 13-yard line. A 45-yard punt and 7 yards on the return. Brett Bassey's team up by touchdown when we return of General Motors, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Motor City Bowl. We're proud to be a presenting sponsor of this great Detroit holiday tradition. This event has become a showcase for the renaissance of Detroit, home of GM's world headquarters. Everyone at Ford is proud to help bring you the Motor City Bowl. This year we celebrated 100 years of being a vital part of the Detroit community. Ford and Detroit are both looking forward to an exciting future together with events like the 2006 Super Bowl. It's an honor to be a presenting sponsor of this year's Motor City Bowl. This is the seventh year that Detroit has hosted this gridiron classic, and each year is better than the last. Thank you for joining us. From everyone at Daimler Chrysler, happy holidays and a happy new year to you and your loved ones. Enjoy the game. All right, and uh, this is certainly the place to be if you're looking at uh, buying an automobile or even receiving one for Christmas. Uh, Santa never hooked me up quite that way, but uh, I'm sure somebody on this planet did. First down and 10 for Northwestern. Here's 
Bazinet out near the 20 yard line brought down at the 19 by Javon Burks for the linebacker. Western's offense uh, getting it done on the ground this year, 28, but uh, Fred Bazinet has struggled subsequently uh, throwing the ball. Four touchdown passes versus just 12 interceptions. Second down and two. And Mark 444 yards rushing against Illinois in their last football game. So Jason Wright got the first down. Out near the 24-yard line, Mike Thaler making the stop on the play. Randy Walker, the present head coach for the Northwestern Wildcats, and here's a look at uh, some of the people that uh, departed after the regular season. And Mark, why this is a factor, the two offensive coaches both signaled in the play call and the formation. So they have two new offensive signal callers on the sidelines today, a live dress rehearsal for them. Bazinet back to pass. Completed the 25. Jason Wright made one guy miss and gained another four yards after the catch out near the 25-yard line. And I'll tell you what, Mark, we get a chance here to watch these coaches signal in. The coaches are paranoid. So when you have coaches leave, you that think? know <laughs> all those signals, I promise you, Northwestern, even though they trust those guys and they're good, loyal guys that left, you change your signals for the bowl game. There you look at Garrick McGee, who incidentally played at Oklahoma in his first game on Northwestern sidelines. Second down and four. That's right out over the 30-yard line. And for more on the change in the coaching staff at Northwestern, here's Holly. Well, guys, as you said, there's some new coaches. Kevin Johns is the main signaler here right behind me. Now, he was a former grad assistant, although the signals have changed dramatically since he left. What they're doing right now is doing it off number systems on their wristbands. So all they're signaling in right now is a number. Then Bazinet looks at his wristband, as he did just then, and calls the play. It simplified things a little bit, but Garrick McGee, as a former quarterback, said they did have to spend some time practicing together, but they finally got it. All right, Holly, on third and three. Complete to Jordan. He got the first down, and whatever they signaled in that time certainly worked out at the 37-yard line. And Bob, uh, Bob, you can't say paranoid coach. That's redundant. Exactly, Mark. Good <laughs> point. And one thing about those wristbands, I always hated using those wristbands because you have to look down at them. And you take your eyes off the field, and I hated doing that. And also players. You know, the quarterback hates looking down at those wristbands as well. So it's a little bit overrated. And... When you get a little bit older, you can forget about those wristbands because there's some small type on those things. Bazinet out into the open space. Getting a good downfield block. Bazinet all the way down to the 43-yard line. Brandon Horn, the wide receiver, gave him a nice block on the edge for the 19-yard pickup. And Brett Bazinet, Mark, he's playing well in this football game as you see him just escape the blitz shows his athleticism but a lot of competition coming into this game in reality he struggled late in the season alexander webb the freshman quarterback a lot of reps during practice for this game so he needs to play well but he's gonna be over there next to randy walker jason wright down to the 37 yard line got about four or five well tomorrow nfl double coverage weekend kicks off on espn with an nfc matchup Philadelphia Eagles looking to win the division title as they close out the regular season against Washington. Sunday, Jamal Lewis leads 48 yards to become the fifth player in NFL history to reach 2,000 yards when Baltimore hosts the Steelers. Both games available in high definition on ESPN HD. And I'll tell you what, Mark, kind of like the NFL's rendition of the BCS. Every one of those games matter now of who gets in as the wild card in the playoffs. Yeah, they're already in playoff mode. That time... It was Darrell Jenkins chopped down in the backfield. Good tackle by T.J. Carswell that time. And Mark, you see both these defenses really playing pretty well. And I do think that's a result of them being extremely familiar with each other's offense. We talked about Greg Brandon going and visiting Northwestern. That's something a lot of people don't understand, I'm sure, in the business world where it's so competitive. The coaches really do exchange a lot of information in the offseason. I'm not sure it's such a good idea if you may have a chance to play them down the road, though. It's like Ford going to Chevy and finding out how to do business. Pass at the 24-yard line, and looks like they're going to rule it a catch. By whom, we're not sure. 
Bowling Green saying they have a pick, but it's going to be a first down for Northwestern. In amongst the traffic, Mark Fillmore. Well, there's Mark Fillmore, the talented receiver. Let's take a look at this. No question. Mark Fillmore right there wrestling the football away from Jansen Patton, the fine All-American defensive back from Bowling Green. First down and 10 at the 24. On the reverse, Heron. Heron tackled at the 17-yard line. They use the uh, double reverse that time. And Mark, I don't think they exchanged that play with Bowling Green when Bowling Green <laughs> came to visit. I think that's one they kind of hid in the back room right there. Got to keep a little something to yourself. That's the last play of the first period. Northwestern, one of the hottest teams in the nation to end the season. Carrying on that trend with a 7-0 lead when we come back after this. To the lights at Ford Field. It's the seventh edition of the Motor City Bowl. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down to the field. Back for the start of the second quarter. Northwestern out of the Big Ten with the ball threatening again. At the 19-yard line, this is the 11th play of the drive. Jason Wright moved the pile and got the first down. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Josh Harris threw a rare interception early in the ball game. At the other end for Northwestern, it was uh, Brian Heinz making the pick. And after Bowling Green failed to convert on fourth down, Northwestern went for it on fourth down, and Noah Heron scored from 40 yards out. Josh Harris uh, waiting patiently to get back on the field, first down and 10 for the Wildcats. Run the ball again, and no room up the middle. That was Jason Wright. But this, you would think, would be part of the game plan for Northwestern. Use that prolific running game to keep Josh Harris right where we saw him moments ago on the sideline. Yeah, Mark, great point. And also, this is what Northwestern is. They are a running football team, occasional play action, but they're a big zone team with a big offensive line. They average about 320 pounds up front. Fazine keeps it himself and is brought down to the 14-yard line by Ted Pitko. One of the team leaders, third overall in tackles for that Bowling Green defense. Great explosive play right there by Ted Pitko. He started the first eight games, then didn't start late in the season, has had some injuries. A key third down here early in this football game, really for both teams, Mark, because Northwestern, not very proficient at kicking field goals. They only have six for the entire season. So a big third down right here, both sides of the football. 14th play of the drive. The ball batted down at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. And it'll be fourth down in the aforementioned field goal unit coming onto the field. Brian Huffman this year is four of five kicking field goals uh, as long as just from 38 yards out. And Mark, he actually has taken over late in the season, really has done a remarkable job. Not only the kicker, but also the punter. And that graphic right there says it all. Six made field goals, but Randy Walker, a fake field goal specialist, <laughs> but I don't think so on fourth and 10, Mark. Huffman knocks it through. And Northwestern leading 10 to nothing. Josh Harris's team averages over 35 points a game. So far, they got a goose egg up there. His turn when we come back to the Motor City Bowl. Go in the first half. Brett Bazinet, the quarterback, and uh, things really turned around for him the mid part of the season. They reduced the package offensively and. Uh, he seemed to benefit from it. Right now, Northwestern with the lead in the ballgame. And Mark, don't panic yet if you're Bowling Green. They come in here total offense, third in the NCAA, right at it about 500 yards a game, averaging 34 points a game. So a lot of football left right here. That's Lane. Bowling Green with just Three losses this year, two of them against Miami, Ohio. Right, Holly Rowe? That's right, and I'm here with the mastermind of that Miami, Ohio team, Coach Terry Hepner. And Coach, 
You beat Northwestern this year. What does Bowling Green have to do right now to get back in this game? Well, obviously, they got to score some points, Holly. I'm really impressed with the way Northwestern's been patient on defense. Uh, the empty set, they've been in empty five or six times. They have yet to run out of it very much. I look for Josh to run out of it more. Northwestern's DBs, they've got to be patient. Josh Harris, such a multiple threat. You were able to beat them twice this year. How were you able to stop Josh? What was successful? Well, that's what we did on defense. We were patient. We mixed it up. Our, your defensive backs have got to be patient. They can't uh, jump on all the short things and let them have some deep throws. Really impressed the way Northwestern's running the football, though. Sometimes people say that the Mac is the, the little brother or the baby Big Ten, but this year, not the case. Tell us how you've gone from being the baby brother to really challenging the Big Ten. Well, you know, it's been part of our plan. This is my fifth year as head coach, and uh, we've got a very good football team. Obviously, Ben Roethlisberger was part of the part of the focus of it, but it, we had a good surrounding cast. But uh, I think Northwestern, they're playing Randy Walker football now. They're running the football. Bowling Green's got to be able to stop that run and obviously uh, put a consistent drive together. If they can do that, you know, and, and get back in the game, I, I think it'll still be an exciting game. All right, words from the expert, guys. Back up to you. All right, Holly, I'm still not sure Bob and convinced that he gave away the whole game plan of how to beat Bowling Green. Just don't give Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> away, baby. That's the whole game plan. And he's coming out after the year. But let's look at what the MAC did this year against BCS schools. Uh, the one that uh, really caught the attention of people really early in the season, I remember most, was that Northern Illinois win over Maryland. Well, and the big thing, Mark, these games all on television. You know, the MAC on TV, especially ESPN. Game day going to Bowling Green. Did the Northern Illinois Bowling Green game. Bowling Green, this is their fifth national TV game this year. So people talk about parody in college football. Another big reason, everybody's on television. And it's really helped Bowling Green, their head coach Greg Brandon says, because they're moving into territories where they previously were unknown. He says that they're into te parts of Texas now where they've never been able to go and they're starting to reap some benefits in recruiting. Well, Mark, I'm going to say this right now. The best Christmas present of this Christmas for Greg Brandon, he got the best present Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> announcing he's coming out in that NFL draft. That's a big time present if you're coaching at Bowling Green because you don't have to play against him again. Yeah, Brandon, the uh, only Bowling Green coach to beat two ranked nationally opponents. Third down in inches. Harris working out of the shotgun. Oh, he won't get the first down. They stopped him cold. Stone by Castillo and McGarrigal. I'll tell you what, Mark, spread offense or not, you better, better block someone. You're going to watch Castillo right here lock out and get penetration in that backfield on third and one. He just pulls the offensive card back in the backfield. And then the linebacker, number 41, Tim McGarrigal, came in and cleaned it up. But Castillo, at 305 pounds, just bench-pressed <laughs> the guard back into the backfield. On fourth and four, a little rugby squid kick. Nate Fry lets it bounce, has it bounce all the way down to the 28-yard line. A 44-yard punt, nothing on the return. Harris unable to get anything going and coming up, honoring the legendary Otto Graham. More after this. EN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Motor City Bowl. Presented by the next Ford F-150. Built Ford Top. And in part by the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Own it on DVD today. And by City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. Western, the decided underdog coming into this contest right now with a 10-0 lead and possession of the ball. First down and 10 from its own 28-yard line. Bazinet hands it off to Jason Wright. Into the boundary, out of bounds at the 31-yard line, brought down by Mitch Hewitt. Well, the football community and the Northwestern football community losing one of their greats a couple of weeks ago. Otto Graham passing away, former quarterback at Northwestern from 1941 to 1943, later went on to play in the National Football League with the Cleveland Browns. Northwestern losing one of its best ever. Second down and seven. Bazinet keeps it himself. 
Got about two, and for more on Otto Graham, let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, as a tribute to Otto Graham today, the Northwestern players are wearing a sticker on the front of their helmets that says simply Otto. Now, you might wonder why players would remember or recognize a guy who played so long ago. Well, every single time they walk into the Northwestern building, there's a huge trophy case that he donated, lots of paraphernalia. He has been a huge part of the Northwestern family. Ironically, he never had a football scholarship. He had a basketball scholarship. The coach saw him play hoop, said, come on over to the football team, and the rest is history. So a lovely tribute to Otto Graham. Yeah, sure is, Holly. Third down and six. Bazinet fires. Incomplete. Jelani Jordan breaking it up. It was intended for Roger Jordan. A dangerous throw almost picked off. Mark, a real poor throw right here by Bazinet. You see Jelani Jordan break on this football. It's underthrown. Jelani Jordan actually benched this week. He's coming into the game right now in their nickel package, but he was the starting corner. We mentioned the move of Keon Newsom to corner replacing him. So Jelani Jordan gets on the field in the substitution defenses. Sharon is back deep. Northwestern's done a good job all season covering punts and kickoffs. Here's Charles Sharon. Weaving his way through traffic out to the 33-yard line. A nice return by him. A 13-yard return on a 48-yard punt. And, hey, no matter which team you think is number one, the only place to see them is on ABC. New Year's Day, 4.30 Eastern, top-ranked USC look to prove their national champs when they face Michigan in the Rose Bowl game presented by City. Look at the BCS standings presented by Allstate. Mark, Bob, USC. I disagree. If you don't win your conference championship, you should not be playing for the national title, Oklahoma. Well, Mark, let me say this. Oklahoma had an unbelievable year. And I think as a coach, you appreciate how difficult it is to go in there and play in a conference championship game in the state of Kansas against a Kansas State team who a lot of people didn't think had a chance. So I disagree with you on that. I, I think the fact that Oklahoma won as many games as they did convincingly throughout the year, it's difficult to go play in a conference championship game. They are still the best team in the Big 12. I think still the best team in the country, regardless of what happened that night in Arrowhead Stadium. I think one of the postulates, though, of college football is that as the season goes on, every game counts. And uh, at some point, uh, no matter what you do during the start of the season or the middle part of the season, it's at the end that counts. And uh, either way, Oklahoma's going to get to play. They're going to get to play for the national title. But like we said in that promo a moment ago, USC says, hey, we got to share this thing, too. And Mark, I like to spread it around. I like the fact there are two great, great national championship implication bowl games. And that USC-Michigan game, that is a big-time game. Two traditional powers, one from the Midwest Big Ten, one from the Pac-10. A lot of flashy skill players in the game. That's a great game. It's hard to top that. Second down and eight for Bowling Green. On Northwestern side of midfield, Bowling Green's offense has been stunted so far. Josh Harris sacked back at the 49 by Pat Durr. The fifth-year senior coming back from a serious knee injury just like his linebacker coach Pat Fitzgerald did back in the day when he was playing at Northwestern. And I do think this 3-3-5 defense, you notice right here, three down linemen, and now they're going to bring Pat Durr from the weak side. I think that's confusing Bowling Green. And right there, a poor job of pass protection by number 67, Andy Grubb. But Pat Durr, normally the Mike or middle linebacker, now, the outside linebacker, Mark, and that's too much grass or artificial grass between that red line and that yellow line for Bowling Green. Third down and nine. Harris underneath complete. And a great run after the catch for the first down by P.J. Pope, who gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. And, man, did the turbo kick in quickly after he made that catch. Pope might be the most unheralded player on the team. And Bowling Green didn't know much about P.J. Pope. They signed him to a scholarship. Not a real highly recruited guy, Mark, but he went and played in the Ohio All-Star game. And Earl Bruce, longtime Ohio State coach, had a chance to see that game. He called Urban Meyer and told him, you've got a sleeper there. He was the best player in that game. And I like P.J. Pope. You mentioned he's explosive, Mark. First down and 10 for Bowling Green. Still trying to get on the scoreboard. They run a little counter, but nowhere to go. 
Nice play by Jarvis Adams, the free safety. Hope brought down right near the line of scrimmage. And you notice, Mark, how multiple great Colby is as we see number 58 Warren down with an injury. But how multiple Northwestern is. Jarvis Adams, the safety, number 23, coming from a deep safety position up on the line of scrimmage, blitzing on the weak side. So Greg Colby doing an excellent job with different schemes. Northwestern experiencing a great midseason turnaround. Bob, we, see not, we saw Northwestern earlier this year against Purdue, save for a couple of untimely turnovers. They played neck and neck with the Boilermakers. We'll be back with more right after this. First game of next season because of so much time between the last football game of the 2003 season and the bowl game as we see Bowling Green motion to empty here out of this punch set. Hope. Oh, good play. Sanders down to the 12, two-yard line. Sanders, number 12, accelerating once he caught it. And it'll be first and goal for Bowling Green. And, Mark, this is really the first bubble screen we've seen. And Bowling Green takes Pope. The running back sends him in motion. And right here, the bubble screen thrown behind his line of scrimmage. You're going to see Pope downfield blocking right here. Excellent job by Cole Magner and Pope. Downfield blocking. And the bubble screen, as long as it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, you're allowed to block downfield with the ball in the air. First and goal. Harris on a predetermined run. Touchdown. And Bowling Green is on the board. That's his 13th rushing touchdown this season, the 43rd of Harris's career. And you see Josh Harris. A lot of yardage this year, Mark, on the bubble screen. He comes back and runs the quarterback trap like he's a tailback. So you are seeing Josh Harris do what he does best. His wife, Tammy, the former Ohio State high jumper, watching. And Bowling Green now within a field goal of Northwestern after starting off very slowly. That drive uh, giving them a little encouragement. 10 to 7 in the seventh edition of the Motor City Bowl. We'll be back with more after this. The only other time they met, they put up 85 points on the board, far below that pace at the moment. But this has been a bowl which traditionally has seen a lot of points scored. We're here at Ford Field in Detroit. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davy and Holly Rowe. It's the Big Ten against the Mid-American Conference. And right now it's Northwestern with the lead. Bowl directors and officials have big hopes for this bowl game. An onside kick tried. Usually it's Northwestern trying the trickery, but this time it was Bowling Green. Greg Brandon trying something a little different. Well, Greg Brandon is known. Free kick out of bounds by the kitchen team. The receiving team had elected to take the ball at the out of bounds spot. First down. Going to be good starting field position for Northwestern then. And Bowling Green, Greg Brandon, is known for trick plays. That time, Mark, he put Keon Newsom, the fine athlete, cornerback slash free safety, out there on the boundary and tried to pooch it and let him catch it in the air. But you see the great field position that's provided for Northwestern. Here's the counter, Jason Wright. Wright keeps those legs moving so well, Bob, all the way down to the 47-yard line, brought down by Jason Morton. Jason Wright. Mark, this time, Northwestern runs the counter. They pull the guard and the backside tight end around in motion. Start action one way, and Jason Wright cuts back the other way. But going back to that onside kick by Greg Brandon, I do not like the timing of that. 10-7, they've kind of scratched and clawed back into this game. Nothing's come easy. I don't like giving Northwestern this great field position right here. And Jason Wright will get a first down at the 41-yard line. Could come back to hot Bowling Green. For more on Jason Wright, let's go to Holly. Well, guys, Jason Wright is a remarkable young man. In 2000, he was sitting on the bench not playing much, and he said, I was just taking Northwestern's check and running with it. He wasn't committed to the football program. But in 2001, he rededicated himself. 
led the team in all-purpose yards, and this season has gone for over 1,000. Not only that, but he is a brilliant student. He took the MCAT preparing for medical school, missed spring ball because of it. He scored a 33, which is 92 percentile on the MCAT. So getting it done both on and off the field, Jason Wright. I guess if the uh, NFL doesn't call, there's always an uh, orthopedic surgeon or cardiologist or some kind of big-time doctor position you can hold by. I think he has a chance to play in the NFL, and he's so versatile. You see him going in motion here. He was a wide receiver, Mark. He may not be the fastest guy, but he's productive. Vasne down to the 38-yard line. Morton making the stop on the play. And uh, back to Jason Wright, Bob. Uh, any athlete, student athlete, that uses words like tertiary, He's down with me. He can he can roll with me at any time. This guy, I've listened to a few of his interviews, and he can talk with the best of them. Well, you're Academic not going to lead me into that <laughs> conversation. That, that's between you and Jason, right? That, that's on a different level. But the guy only runs 4-6, but I like his explosiveness. I like his versatility. I think he can go and make an NFL team. There's Bazne. Threw it away. Roger Jordan gone downfield. And Mark, one thing that Northwestern really concentrated on since the end of the season was trying to become more efficient throwing the football with, for, for Brett Bazinet. He came out of St. Viator High School. He threw the football a lot. St. Viator, the same high school uh, Jarek Payton's from. Threw the football a lot, highly recruited, but he's really struggled here late in the season, a lot of it because he's been injured. Take a look at the red line. That demarcates the line of scrimmage on third down. Bazinet looking for a receiver, backside pressure, and he wisely throws it away. Good pressure by Mitch Hewitt. Great job of Bowling Green. Bowling Green's defense right there. After having been in poor field position playing man-to-man -man coverage, you see one safety deep, one safety underneath, and kind of a robber package. Excellent job right there by Jelani Jordan on the little out-and-up move. But Mark Bowling Green locking on man-to-man -man with one safety short as a robber and one safety deep. Good series right there by Bowling Green. Bob Huffman in a punt at the 50-yard line. and try and hang this one inside the 20. Oh, he sticks it nicely. And Northwestern, as I mentioned earlier, doing a good job covering kicks and punts on the season. Time now for our AOL rushing matchup. Northwestern second in the Big Ten, a little over 200 per game. And uh, Bowling Green leading the back at over 204 per contest. But far below that today, Bob, today they're running for just 100, actually 41 yards. Well, familiarity with these two schemes, we mentioned early, this is a finesse, kind of a trickeration, kind of a running scheme, both these teams, and both defenses, Mark, play against this every day in practice. So the team that wins this game is gonna have to make some plays throwing the football. Well, Josh Harris, speaking of throwing the football, was 3 of 3 on that last scoring drive. Keeps it himself on the predetermined run out to the 17-yard line, where Pat Durr brings him down. Sense that uh, Josh Harris in the offense starting to get untracked a little bit. And watch, the, watch Josh Harris right here at 235 pounds. Step over. Big, strong quarterback. He's going to be playing in the Senior Bowl after the season. Dropped 10 pounds last year, got in better condition, dedicated himself a little bit more, and it's paid off when you look at his statistics. Second down and two. Harris keeps it again. Got the first down and then some. Josh Harris beyond the 30 at the 33. With 5.23 to go, nodding his head, saying, yeah, 16-yard pickup for him. One of the favorite plays of these spread offenses, Mark, right here. They're going to fake the ball to the tailback. Then they run the quarterback wrap with the backside tackle pulling around as the lead blocker. You get an excellent block right here by number 54, Jimmy Williams on Pat Durr. And then the quarterback slash tailback takes the ball and bounces outside. But misdirection pulling the backside linebacker. She likes that play, Mark. Oh, she, she, she might have called that quarterback one. Quarterback <laughs> Tammy, his wife, Tammy Harris, watching from the stands. 
Running it down to the 34 that time as Pope brought down by Luis Castillo. Interesting how, uh, you know, as reported earlier by Holly Rowe, Tammy Harris and Josh Harris were looking for a place to live. He wanted to do the right thing and decided that the two of them should get married. Came back and just forgot to tell his coaches about it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I think he eventually did tell Greg Brandon. <laughs> I might be cynical. I thought it had a lot to do with getting a present from Greg Brandon. Yeah, that, 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 you can go that way. For the wedding. But he did eventually tell him of his, of his marriage. Quiet, almost to a fault at times. Second down and nine. He completes it. His game doing the talking right now at the 43-yard line. That was Magner. who was and, working on Marvin Ward. And, Mark, we have to tell the story about Cole Magner. We mentioned he's from Alaska. Urban Meyer takes the head job at Bowling Green. Greg Brandon comes with him from Colorado, where he'd been the offensive coordinator. Magner in Colorado's camp. Greg Brandon comes to Bowling Green, convinces Urban Meyer to fly in Cole Magner. They spent $800 for the ticket, the plane ticket, to fly him in from Alaska. Urban Meyer on the eye test said, Greg, you've got to be kidding me. This guy cannot be a Division I player. Ended up being the best $800 Bowling Green's ever spent. Heck of an investment. Harris got the first down. Made it up to the 46. Stopped by Brian Hines. How do you get to uh, Palmer, Alaska <laughs> to Bowling Green? Well, uh, yeah. Lewis and Clark couldn't get the there. First thing, Mark, you have to have some dog sleds to get you from point A to oh. point B to get on that airplane. See? <laughs> I've researched this. There is no, no direct major flight? airline service into Palmer. Palmer, Alaska. Here they have some good salmon up there, some good salmon fishing. That's a... His grandfather don't, on the left and dad on the right. There. You're one of those Caribbean <laughs> guys. You, you don't spend any time up north of that border now. Harris going up north. Downtown, a flag on the play, and the catch made at the 20 by Charles Sharon, the other half of that great receiving duel. He was working on Marvin Ward. And Sharon laid out and made the catch. And we've been waiting for this. Charles Sharon in their last regular season gave eight catches for 120 yards against Toledo. They love to get him on the backside of that formation. Great job right there of concentration. Marvin Ward, good coverage mark, but stumbling right here late. And Charles Sharon from Palatka, Florida, down there on Lake Okeechobee. There's been a bunch of players come out of Lake Okeechobee area now. 34-yard pickup for Sharon. First down and 10. Wagner in motion. Wagner, he can throw the ball. He's thrown five touchdown passes this year. This one's picked off. Picked off by Ward. They went back and worked on Ward one time too many. Magner's a former quarterback. He's thrown for five touchdowns in his career. Not that time. And, Mark, I'm glad you said former quarterback right here. We saw against Toledo the throwback to the quarterback. This time, Cole Magner tries to go down the field. And, Mark, is he colorblind? <laughs> he flat threw it right there to number 20, number 31, Marvin Ward. And, again, Greg Brandon trying to trick him right there on first down, Mark. And it backfired. Things were rolling right along, but stopped at the 16. Here's Heron. Noah Heron. Nice run out to the 33. A 17-yard pickup and a first down. Under three minutes to go here in the first half. Another dimension of Jason Wright's game, Mark. Right here, you're going to see him as the lead blocker, lead through on the zone play. And Heron with the lead blocker right here. Jason Wright comes up inside. No Heron cut back right there. Poor, poor football position by number 19, Jason Morton. First down and 10. There's Jason Wright. Wright. Down to the 41 and another Wildcat first down. A 26-yard gain by Jason Wright. And you see the explosiveness of Jason Wright right here on the simple zone play. He just flat outruns people. 
Bob, you say he's 4'6". He looks faster than that. Yeah, what you love, Mark, he goes north and south. I mean, he gives you that 4'6". Legitimately, every time the ball snapped, because he doesn't take many wasted steps. Here's Heron now, gaining about four. Northwestern's running game, second in the Big Ten Conference, and piling up the numbers today as Wright takes a well-deserved breather. Heron with 72, Wright with 73. Heron with that 40-yard touchdown run, the first one of the game. Second down and nine. You see Noah Heron lined up right here now, Mark, as a wide receiver. He never comes out of the game. He's used as a wide receiver and running back. Out of the backfield, incomplete. That was a forward pass, and Risa, tell us what's going on at halftime. All right, Mark, when we do join you in halftime, Trevin Marker here. Mark, a sliver of an opportunity for a coach to come back to college? Yeah, the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, is in a power struggle with Washington Redskins management. And if we're getting completely thrown under the bus by my former partner, we'll go back and revisit <laughs> the officials debate, and I'll explain why. Uh, you're going to have to explain why. I only try to protect you. We'll have the insight on the insight coming up in a bit, too, guys. <laughs> All right, can't wait to hear you at halftime. Third down and nine. Here's the reverse. Fillmore bottled up, put it on the ground, and Bowling Green says they have it. Bowling Green ball. Mark Fillmore, number nine, has not played since the Wisconsin game earlier in the season. And right now, he does not protect the football here on this reverse, Mark. You're going to get a chance to see it late right here. That football's yanked out of there by Keon Newsom and recovered by Crossley, number 90. Rick Brandon loving every bit of it. Finally, the beneficiary of a turnover. Mitchell Crosley, meanwhile, had a tough year battling adversity off the field. And Mark, how much do you scrimmage as a head football coach where you actually tackle those backs and receivers? Not much prior to a bowl game. Mark Fillmore coughing the football up. Pass complete to Charles Sharon to try and work the clock as they move it downfield with 1.24 to go in the first half. And Running back Kevin Jones will lead Virginia Tech as they face a Pac-10 team for the first time. Following us, it's the inside bowl between California and Virginia Tech. It's a part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. I think Kevin Jones has already said that he's uh, going to turn pro next year. Again empty, and you see Josh Harris looking at how far those linebackers displace Mark to determine whether it's run or pass. Once again, Charles Sharon working on Marvin Ward. Marvin Ward, a guy with three interceptions on the season, two-time uh, Big Ten Player of the Week. Uh, more responsibility, Bob, because Tory Stuckey was uh, suspended for this game because of violation of team policy. You're right, Mark. And Marvin Ward's had an excellent season. 69-yard interception against Illinois. I like the fact he'll hit you, but I'll tell you what, he's got all he wants today yep. lined up on Charles Sharon. This is a big-time matchup down into the short side of the field here into the boundary. Harris with a hot hand. And slipped and fell at the 35, fell forward to the 32. With 1.09 to go. But Greg Brandon going to call a timeout. Their first of the half, Northwestern with their full complement still remaining. 106 to go in the half. We'll be back after this. Under quarterback Josh Harris starting to heat up a little bit offensively, moving the ball well. He's completed his last seven passes. And why bowl games are so important to football teams, both these teams, particularly Northwestern, a young football team with nine seniors. This is better than spring practice, Mark, because you have unlimited practice opportunities getting ready for a bowl game. Out of an empty formation. Complete. James Hawkins making the grab. They move the chains again now to the 25. Another first down. And now Harris has completed eight consecutive passes. And we're seeing all empty now, Mark. Spread out five wide receivers across the field. 
Going up top. And it's picked off by Dominic Price. The Northwestern secondary has been patient, able to stunt Josh Harrison Bowling Green. It looks like the turnover ball mark. Both teams turning it over. Right here, Josh Harris wants to go on the corner route. Just a poorly, poorly thrown football. And Dominic Price goes up and makes the interception. For a fifth-year senior, you've got to tell it like it is. And you're right, Greg Brandon. That was a poor, poor decision, particularly on first down. No reason to force that football, Mark. Second interception of the season for Price. We've had three consecutive turnovers now. On the respective offensive sequences. Here's Jason Wright. Boy, making people miss. Jason Wright weaving, bobbing, all the way down to the 42, finally tackled by T.J. Carswell, and now Northwestern with a possibility to put some points on the board before the end of the half. And Mark Northwestern just testing the water right here, probably going to run out the half, but you see right here, Jason Wright, great cutback ability, makes T.J. Carswell miss, but look at the effort right here by T.J. Carswell of catching up and tackling him from behind. Northwestern using its first time out, and uh, like you said, Bob, Northwestern was perhaps just trying to run out the clock, but now they find themselves in a situation with the ball at uh, the 43-yard line of Bowling Green and a chance to put some points on the board so far. If you were head coach Randy Walker, you'd have to say that the game plan is playing itself out pretty well. Well, no question, but Bowling Green, Mark, with two turnovers down in the red zone, not playing very well. I mean, let's call it like it is. Some poor decisions, particularly throwing the football. But Northwestern right here with two timeouts left in the first half. They've got a chance to win right here, not only with great uh, 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 momentum. momentum on their side, but also get more points here late in the half. We heard Terry Hepner, the head coach of Miami, Ohio, say that Northwestern's DBs had to be patient. Looks like they've done just that. Came away with a pick on that last sequence. And a little bit of impatience on the part of Bowling Green, particularly in decision-making, throwing the football. First down and 10. Basney on the out and up for Jordan. And there's a flag as Jordan bumped into Keon Newsom downfield. Jordan pulling his jersey as if to say he was held on the play, which he was. That's what the official saw, too. And Roger Jordan on the out and up. Keon Newsom playing corner for the first time held. Pass interference. Defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Holly Rowe, what's the vibe downstairs on the field? Hey guys, Bowling Green was sky high after they got that turnover from Northwestern. But after that last interception in the red zone, their second interception in the red zone, it's like the air just went out of the balloon. Very flat here on the sidelines. Guys really wondering how they're going to get back in this. They've been able to move the football, but mistakes are costing them dearly. And Western Division champs out of the MAC. Finding themselves behind right now. Coming on a blitz, Bassinet into the end zone. Incomplete. A lot of jostling downfield between Jordan and Newsom again, and Newsom waving his hand, saying, yeah, throw it my way one more time. Roger Jordan, a big, strong receiver at 220 pounds. Keon Newsom, a big physical corner. That's a good matchup right there. And this guy here, Mark, has a chance to be an NFL player as well. Keon Newsom from Georgia, 29 starts, their number one tackler at safety. Now he's a corner. 29 seconds to go in the half. Basney on the option. Keeps it himself and falls down at the 20-yard line, a couple yards short of the first down. The flag on the play, though. Looks like it was a little movement against Bowling Green up front. Offside on the defense has been declined. The result of the play. Boy, this all started with the interception thrown by Josh Harris. Look how far and how quickly Northwestern's moved it down the field. And coming up on the halftime report with Reese, Trev, and Mark. News from the nation's capital on Steve Spurrier and a little hot water there and some referee talk. And a preview of the Insight Bowl coming up. That's right after us. Northwestern's last bowl win came way back in 1949. 
Wildcats, who many considered to be the surprise team in the 48 college season, knocked off California 20 to 14. 47 years would go by before the Wildcats would play in another bowl game. The 1949 Rose Bowl was also Northwestern's first and last victory in a bowl game. Is that what Pasadena looked like, Bob? <laughs> huh? It's grainy black and white. Look at their bowl history. And Mark, their fifth bowl since 1882. I did a little calculation on that. Uh -oh. That's one bowl game every 23 years. And the last time they played in a bowl game, they got manhandled by Nebraska down at the Alamo Bowl, 66 to 17. So fifth bowl game since 1882. It puts it in perspective what a fine job Gary Barnett and Randy Walker have done going to bowl games here in the last 10 years. Let's go downstairs to Holly for more on that. Well, guys, some people may have thought Northwestern would be disappointed to come to the Motor City Bowl in Detroit, just a little bit away from Chicago. Randy Walker said not so. So many people had written off this program after the tragedy with Rashidi Wheeler, after their two losing seasons and everything that's happened. He said, our guys are thrilled. He said, I have never been so proud of a team. This has been the most gratifying team of my career, and that's because they have never given up. They're grateful to be here in this bowl game. Yeah, he talked about how his team was running on empty the last time that they played Bowling Green because of that tragedy with the late Rashidi Wheeler, how it took a lot out of his team emotionally. Didn't have much left in the tank. Third down and two for the Wildcats. Got to get to the 18. Here's the throwback for the, to the quarterback, but Heron couldn't get rid of it. Bottled up at the 23, and they'll lose some yardage. They've got timeouts remaining. And a great job, Mark, by number 97, Will Tig. The defensive end peeling off right there. What they wanted to do was throw back to the quarterback. And look right here. It's like he was in the huddle. He smells that thing coming. He's going to sit at home, wait for Bazinet. Pretty good bump and run technique right there by the big defensive end. But that's a disciplined plus a great call right there because he actually was dropping off into coverage. Both these coaches not afraid to take chances. We've seen it already. And we talked about Northwestern's bowl history. Here's a look at Bowling Green's uh, bowl history. Lake Mercy in 1961 and Las Vegas the last time in 1992. And Bowling Green played in their first ever Las Vegas Bowl in 92 against Nevada. The Falcons uh, scored on their first four possessions, taking a 28-3. There's the throwback right there. 28-3 halftime lead in the second half. Nevada scored 31 unanswered points, taking a 34-28 lead with 22 seconds left. Eric White hit Dave Hankins on fourth down for the game-winning score. It's Bowling Green won 35-34. Love those old ESPN graphics too. Here's Huffman in for the field goal attempt. This one coming from 40 yards out. He made one earlier from 31. Huffman, no good. Might have been partially blocked. Javon Burks, number three, may have gotten a hand on it. What looked like a promising drive dies with no points as a result. We're going to get a chance right here. Mark Huffman, I believe, kicked this ball low. We're going to see Burks, the linebacker, in a three-point stance. Yeah. Javon Burks got that left hand on the football. It did look like it was kicked at a low angle, and Bowling Green survives. Goes going to hand here at halftime, only down three points. And a big day for Burks, Bob, playing here in his native Detroit. He's from Detroit. Comes up with a big play, a great turnaround story. The team captain had three times as many votes than anyone else on that team. And exhorting the Bowling Green fans that have made the trip here to Detroit. And Holly Rose joined by the head coach, Greg Brandon. Coach, what turned around in that first half? Josh Harris was able to be more productive. Well, you know, we're just kind of stumbling around a little bit. We're not taking care of the football. Uh, Josh, when we get him, get him going, running the ball, we kind of loosen him up, and then the throws open up. So, uh, you know, we'll play better in the second half. We just we just need to take care of the football. Our defense Coach, what, is playing lights out. Coach, what did you think after the second turnover in the red zone? Well, I called that trick play, so I'll take that one. That was my, uh, my call. But Cole, Cole's got to take care of the football. That's the problem. We're not taking care of that football. All right, thanks very much, Coach. All right, Holly, and uh, we are at halftime. The Wildcats leading the Falcons 10-7. The Mac against the Big Ten. 
Lots of news and sports, and we're going to kick it back to the studio with Reese, Trev, and Mark with the halftime report. Guys? All right, Mark, the three turnovers that Coach Brandon mentioned sort of stifling the nation's fourth-ranked total offense right now. Northwestern has the lead at the half. Bowling Green defense has... Welcome back, everyone, to the Motor City. And in the Motor City, things always built tough, rugged, and part of the right formula, Bob Davies, being able to put things together in the right kind of segments. And so far, Northwestern has done just that to score 10 to 7 at halftime. And the formula so far has been running the ball with Wright and Heron, and it's worked. Both teams, Mark, moving the football. Uh, both offenses at about 240 yards for the first half, but not a lot of points. Ten points for Northwestern, seven points for Bowling Green. The big reason, turnovers for Bowling Green. Turned the football over three times, twice down there in scoring opportunity. Northwestern with the blocked field goal versus them there at the end of the first half. So we look at these statistics really different in the respect that Northwestern running the football, really struggling throwing it. Bowling Green, tailbacks no factor in the game running the football. Josh Harris a good job running, but able to throw the football. Mark, I think this game is going to come down to who can make a big play in the passing game in the second half. I like Charles Sharon, number one, the big wide receiver from Bowling Green. Northwestern, no ability to throw the football at all in the first half. And in their last game against Illinois, three for nine passing for 25 yards. So they can run the ball. They're going to have to throw it and make a play. Well, a few moments ago, Holly Rowe caught up with head coach Randy Walker of Northwestern. Coach, what was the first half like for Northwestern? Well, you know, it's a lot like a lot of games. It wasn't, a, it wasn't perfect, but we played hard. Had some good things happen. Need to correct some things on both sides of the ball, but I, I'm pleased with where we're at. What's been the key to the success of the running game? Well, our kids just stay on blocks and play hard. We got a couple backs that can see it and make great plays, and, and we're just going to need to stay and keep pounding that rock and stay at it. What do you expect in the second half? Oh, I think we got a lot of football left in this game. It's going to be wild and woolly down to the finish. We just need to hang in there and play 60 minutes or whatever it takes. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Got to remember to finish games if you're Northwestern. Last time, Bowling Green came back and scored 29 fourth quarter points to defeat Northwestern a couple of years ago in the first and only meeting between these two teams. Backus and Jason Wright back deep on this kick for Northwestern which will go through the back of the end zone and they'll start off on their own 20 yard line let's take a look at our ESPN game track and for Bowling Green it was a sign of things to come when Josh Wright threw an interception early in the ball game and this one really hurt late in the first half when they were driving close to getting a score Brett Bazine one of the best plays to them for they for them today pitching the ball to Heron and to right, and that was Heron on a 40-yard scamper for a touchdown earlier in the first quarter. And Mark, the option was really a good play for Northwestern in the first half of this football game. First down and 10, and Jason Wright starts the second half the way they began the first half, out to the 23. Rick Maurer making the stop up front for Bowling Green. Jason Wright, two-time Big Ten Player of the Week. Uh, does so many different things off the field, like we mentioned, and uh, even sang the national anthem before the Northwestern Hoops game earlier last year. Aaron, meanwhile, also a significant contributor. Second down and seven. Two tight ends in the ball game on the counter. Busting it is Heron. Right off to the races. Jason Wright, touchdown. 77 yards. If one doesn't get you, the other one will. And you talk about going north and south, Mark. That's about as north as you can head. Jason Wright on the tailback counter takes it to the house. His 20th rushing touchdown this season, the 32nd of his career. And what a way to start off the second half for Northwestern. Doing it on the ground. The extra point just good. Northwestern with the second leading ground game in the Big Ten, showing you just why right there. The turbo kicked in for Jason Wright, and it was all over. A look of determination etched across his face. 17-7 when we come back. Jason Wright, 
the senior out of Diamond Bar, California, with a career-long 77-yard touchdown run. I don't know if you can call two plays a scoring drive, but they'll take it. Bowling Green looking for an answer. They're going to start off on their own 20-yard line. Let's take one more look at that explosive run by Wright. And they run the misdirection counter, and I want to show you a great block right here by Jills Lazee, 39. Right here, he's going to chop block Hewitt, the linebacker. Hewitt's going to fall over top of him, and then number 77, Mike Thaler's going to fall over top of him, and now it's just a straight-out track meet, Mark, as we see the speed of Jason Wright. I believe Jason Wright is an NFL player yeah Bob there's some guys that are four six but run faster seem to run faster than that he looks like one of those first down and ten Harris hands it off to Pope and for more on Jason Wright let's go to Holly hey guys we talk about Jason Wright's four six speed his teammates always tease him and so do his coaches about how slow he is he says to his coach hey listen I'll get you that first ten I might not break it open but I'll get ten this time he did break it open and his quarterback Brett Bassnay came over to the sideline and said I was praying don't catch him don't catch him don't catch him <laughs> he said hey they weren't catching me <laughs> I promise you, Randy Walker was over there praying, don't catch him, Same don't thing. catch him, don't <laughs> catch him, too. Second down and eight. Magner in motion for Bowling Green. Harris completes it to Magner. Close to the first down marker, and he's going to get the first down just beyond the 30. Dominique Price making the stop on the play. Mark, the NFL looks for a lot of things. I'm talking about NFL scouts watching this game, NFL coaches at home watching it on television number one is arm strength all those things athleticism another thing they look for how do you come back when your football team's down don't forget two years ago in evanston 29 points in the fourth quarter josh harris led bowling green so he's been in this situation before first down and 10 harris pulls the trigger completes it over the middle at the 38 yard line to mcgrady Harris with some pretty good numbers today, except for those two interceptions, but he's run the ball well. And quarterback to the side, and he's done it with his arm as well. Struggle with interceptions, the two that I mentioned, uh, there was one of them. And one of them happened very early. This was the other one late in the first half, which killed the scoring drive. Price with a pick. Second down and three. Harris completes it to the 42-yard line. It'll be a first down. Went to McGrady once again. Mark, to give you an idea about Josh Harris and why we say quarterback slash tailback, so far in this football game, Bowling Green's tailbacks, P.J. Pope and B.J. Lane, 17 yards rushing. Josh Harris with 54 yards rushing. So he really is the tailback in this offense. First down and 10 for Harris. Harris has meant so much to Bowling Green over the last four years. They love the bubble screen out of that formation, Mark. We saw it earlier in the game as well. There it is to Sanders. And for more on Harris, here's Holly. Well, guys, in the first half, Miami coach Terry Hepner, that beat this Bowling Green team twice, told me the key to Josh Harris is making him run on the and throw on the run. When he stands back in the pocket and just throws the ball like he's doing right now, he is unstoppable. He is so efficient. He said the way we've beaten him is force him to throw on the run where he is not as efficient. Right now, we're seeing Bowling Green try to keep him standing still where he's at his most effective. Second down and seven. From the 46. Goes up top for Magner. Incomplete. Incomplete at the 20-yard line. It was intended for Magner, broken up by Jarvis Adams, number 23. Simply running Magner right up the seam right here. A well-thrown football, excellent play on the football by Jarvis Adams, number 23, Mark. Just stayed with it right there and got that football out of Cole Magner's grasp. Adams a little shaken up, comes off to the sidelines. You talk about Harris's accuracy, Bob, and he threw a nice ball there. All during the offseason last year, he worked on his accuracy. Those mid-range passes 
zero to 20 yards. He threw into a net for hours and hours. Look at the red line on third down. That is the line of scrimmage. The screen to Sharon. Sharon lunging for the first down to keep the drive alive for the Falcons. Nice effort for Charles Sharon. Charles Sharon with his sixth catch of the game. The little jailbreak screen with the big lineman out in front blocking number 54, Jimmy Williams, stretches that football mark across that yellow line for the first down. I like Charles Sharon. A man that has dealt with a lot of adversity off the field. His grandfather passed away about a month ago. He missed a game as a result. First down and 10 for Harris. And he's brought down at about the 44-yard line by Lauren Howard. An honorable mention, all Big Ten selection, led the team with seven sacks coming into this one. Got, a, got one already tonight. And Lauren Howard is the most impressive defensive lineman, in my opinion, on this football team. 15 tackles for loss, eight sacks. He's from Scottsdale, Arizona. Mark, he had 42 offers out of high school. Came down to Washington, Arizona State. Came to Northwestern. His uncle played football at Northwestern. Bob, on the ninth play of the drive, Harris fires a dart complete to Magner at the 33 and another Bowling Green first down. He beat Dominique Price that time in on the coverage. And Northwestern playing a lot of man-free coverage. Dominic Price, number eight, locked on Cole Magner. You're going to see Josh Harris step up. Excellent throw, excellent catch. Northwestern felt they could play man-to-man -man coverage. And there's Cole's grand father and father from in Alaska. From Palmer, Alaska. They think it's balmy today in Detroit, <laughs> Mark. First down and 10. Inside anyway. Harris on the move this time once again to Magner. Near another first down at the 22. Bacchus. Talk about Magner being a two-sport athlete. He's going to be joining Dan Dockich's basketball team January 3rd. Well, and you see the plan. The first half adjustment at halftime. Greg Brandon coming out and throwing the football extremely well here in the second half. You see Josh Harris drop back. Now you see him throw the football on the run. Impressive drive right here, Mark. And there you see the way those young guys wear that hair in Alaska. <laughs> those long blonde locks that you appreciate so much. Closing in on a record needs eight yards. That was his seventh catch of the day. First down and 10 for Bowling Green. Pope down to the 19. One of the keys for Bowling Green is not to implode in the red zone. Mark, that's an excellent point. One thing we've not seen today is the option that Bowling Green runs where they pitch the football to Cole Magner, the wide receiver. I'm a little surprised that they haven't used him as a ball carrier. That's been kind of a signature play for Bowling Green throughout the season. On second down and seven from the 19, this is the 12th play of the Bowling Green drive. Wide open to tight end, Craig Jarrett. And now Bowling Green starting to open up the playbook a little bit. We haven't seen that one to the tight end today yet, Bob. Well, and Craig Jarrett came into this game, Mark, only seven catches on the season. Let me tell you about this guy. You talk about Jason Wright from Northwestern. I'll match this guy's GPA with anyone. <laughs> He's a 4.0 student, biochemistry. He's going to be a doctor, academic All-American. That catch right there is every bit as exciting to him, though, when you only catch it seven times all year. Is that A in chemistry, Mike? First and goal. Harris. Magner. Touchdown, Bowling Green. And Josh Harris is hot. He's starting to stroke it a little bit. Josh Harris led them methodically down the field into the end zone. Mixed it up with Magner, got it to Sharon, hit his tight end on a pass, and the Falcons are right back in business, and his father and grandfather, a little stoked too. Magner also the holder on the extra point. And Josh Harris, we mentioned a moment ago, how does he respond? Mark, you can't respond much better than that. 
In case you missed it, this is how you make it. From Alaska, Palmer, Alaska, all the way to Bowling Green, Ohio. We'll tell you more about his migration when we come back on the other side. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Motor City Bowl. Presented by Pontiac. Official performance machines of the NCAA. And in part by City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. And by Circuit City. We're with you. Downtown Detroit. City of Glow at Night, a city built on the backbone of the auto industry. Oh, Magner. Boy, look at those long, blonde locks, Bob. Hey, Mark, that's what you picture a guy from Alaska. <laughs> up there in the mountains. Doing a little hunting? Yeah. Huh? Have you ever been to look Alaska? Like, no. Look like uh, Mel Gibson in uh, Braveheart there. Well, we take a look at the touchdown. What you're going to see is Northwestern in straight man-to-man -man coverage. No free safety help. Defensive back Dominic Price has to take away the inside. Cole Magner reads the coverage, breaks to the outside. Excellent throw and catch. And there's the grandfather and the father down from Palmer, Alaska, saying, Cole, when you lived at home, you didn't wear your hair that long. You go to, you go to college, that stuff happens. You know, they start to unwind a little bit. Do things their own way. Mason Wright, who had a 77-yard touchdown run on the last drive, brought down by Mitchell Crosley in case you missed it. Palmer, Alaska. What was it, Bob? The Bowling Green coaching staff spent 800 bucks to go watch him. And that looks great like that investment. Was, looks like a pretty good deal, actually. Yeah. $800 coming from Palmer, Alaska. But he actually flew into Cleveland. Bowling Green coaches picked him up. Thought they had wasted $800 <laughs> when they first looked at him on the hoof. But he ended up being a great addition to this program, Mark. Here's Jason Wright again, trying to take it around the left end. Wright, two yards short of the first down, brought down by Jason Morton. And uh, look at the reaction of Cole Magner. He's looking at the Jumbotron and saying, Palmer, Alaska, got to represent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're watching. <laughs> Yeah, no, Bob, to answer your question, no, I've never been to Alaska, but I've eaten a lot of Alaskan salmon. Well, I heard you talking about all that salmon, like you've been out there in that stream what? casting that line. <laughs> They're down in two. Vazine out of the shotgun. Complete for the first down to the 33. Jason Wright can hurt you so many different ways as a runner, as a receiver. Again, Mark, I say... Jason Wright is an NFL player right here on third down and two. Pretty good throw by Bazinet. And a big first down right there by Northwestern. Chosen by his head coach Randy Walker to give the player speech at the Big Ten Banquet. Respected by all, Jason Wright, first down and ten. Heron in the ball game for him. This is Heron scored a touchdown on a 40-yard run already tonight. Down to the 37. Capital One Bowl Week continuing on ESPN tonight at 8.30 Eastern in California when the Pac-10 faces Virginia Tech from the Big East in the Insight Bowl. Bearcats are the only team to beat top-ranked USC this season. And Kevin Jones, Mark, check that the Bears, decided to come out in next year's NFL draft. He's a heck of a football player. Oh. Big physical running back. Second down and seven. Flag down on the play. Heron brought down after a gain of about two. We're going to get a holding penalty mark. The same counter play that Jason Wright scored the touchdown on, but they held on the backside. For more on Heron, let's go to Holly. Holly? Shredding the Bowling Green Holding. defense right now. Noah Heron shredding the Bowling Green defense, but look at his shirt. It is completely shredded. He wears this shirt underneath his jersey. He's had it for two years, and he says he has not taken it off. It is completely good luck, and he's not going to tear off those big strings that are hanging down. He thinks it's a sign of uh, pride and a sign of a being a warrior. So far, so good for him today in the lucky shirt. Holly hasn't taken it off for two years. I hope he's washed it. <laughs> Second and 17. That was Northwestern's first penalty of the ballgame. 
jailbreak screen to the short side of the field. Nothing happening as Keon Newsom has switched to corner for this game. Brought down Mark Fillmore. How you beat the jailbreak screen, Mark, is to beat the blockers. And that time, Keon Newsom just exploded before Kunle Patrick could make the block. And as I mentioned before, I believe Keon Newsom is an NFL player as well. He's got a brother in the NFL. Kendall Newsom plays wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. Third down at 19. Empty formation, five receivers for Bazinet. Going up top. Contact. And the catch made unbelievably by Mark Fillmore, who came right back to make the play. He beat the All-American, Jansen Patton, on the play. Pass interference. Defense has been declined. The result of the play the first time. He beat a good DB on that, Bob. And Mark Fillmore, Mark, we're going to see here at the bottom. He's their speed receiver. Just a simple takeoff route against man free. Jansen Patton really panicked a little bit. I mean, he was in great phase right there, but he panicked, got locked up on Fillmore, and pass interference penalty, no factor as they take the play. Great ball thrown by Bazinet as well. First down and 10. Handed off to Jason Wright. Wright getting big chunks at a time. Pipko making the stop. But Wright closing in on a Motor City Bowl record. Carrying momentum from the last game of the regular season Mark, against Illinois. You want to see how to close a run? Watch at the end of this. Jason Wright on Morton. The safety right there. What now? As this thing finishes, he just flat ran him over. Number 19, Jason Morton. Look at that. Uh, Western's rush offense soon to eclipse the bowl record. And they will soon if Wright has anything to do with it. Still in open space. Fumble. And Bowling Green recovers at the 11. Jansen Patton pounced on the loose ball. Mark, he does not fumble the football very often. In fact, he had an unbelievable streak of no fumbles per carry going into the Purdue game. But right here on the tailback counter again, he creases them north and south. Right there, Keon Newsom comes in and does an excellent job of stripping that football. And Jason Patton, number two, gets the recovery. And Josh Harris going to try and capitalize on that turnover with the ball when we come back. Back everyone to the seventh edition of the Motor City Bowl. Northwestern with a three-point lead over Bowling Green. First down and ten now for the Falcons on their own 11-yard line after the fumble by Jason Wright. Turnover is a big part of the storyline in this game so far. Josh Harris was red hot on that last scoring drive. He pitches it this time to B.J. Lane. And let's take one more look at that strip. That was definitely by design. And Mark, you see more and more of this in college football. Right here, Keon Newsom coming in and just flat stripping that football away from Jason Wright. And an excellent effort right there by Jansen Patton pulling that football out of the left hand of Jason Wright to recover the fumble. Second down and four. Harris on a predetermined run keeps it himself. It's going to be right near the first down marker where he's tackled by Luis Castillo. We approach four minutes to go now in the third period. Bowling Green coming in 10 and 3 overall. Champions of the Western Division in the MAC Conference. First year head coach, Greg Brandon, winning 10 games. Those 10 wins are the most by any first year coach in D1A football history. And Bowling Green's three losses, Mark, we see twice to Miami, Ohio, once at Ohio State, a 24 17 game in Columbus. On first and ten. That time Harris brought down and brought down hard by Clark at the 15-yard line. 
Colby Clark, normally a defensive tackle, they move him to defensive end for this game, and he just ragdolls Josh Harris at the end on the option. Loss of about five on the play. Second down and 15. This game not quite the shootout that we expected coming in. Turnovers, Mark. A shootout in regards to a lot of yardage in this game, but because of the turnovers, not many points. The teams are well over 300 yards of total offense. Harris complete. It's his tight end, his second catch of the game for Craig Jarrett. Makes it out to the 23-yard line, about six yards to go for the first down. Third down coming up. Josh Harris, the son of M.L. Harris, former NFL player with the Cincinnati Bengals. Third down and eight to go. And Mark, we see that red line again. It's all about controlling this line to get to this line starting with pass protection right now. Harris knocked away nicely at the 33-yard line. Good closing speed by Pat Durr, the fifth-year senior linebacker. It'll be fourth down. And you needed a great play on the ball by Pat Durr because the pass protection here against the three-man rush, excellent pass protection. Josh Harris, plenty of room to step up, and Pat Durr, an excellent break on the ball right there for a linebacker. And with that visor, Mark, you'll wonder how he can even see the football. Look a little like Darth Vader with that thing on. Nick Bryan for the third punt of the day for him. 2.21 to go in the third quarter. And a great punt. All the way back to the 26, Kunle Patrick. A 50-yard boot. Nothing on the return. Burks Murphy making the tackle. Jason Wright going to get a chance to atone for that fumble moments ago when we come back. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. Jason Wright as he clips the Motor City Bowl rushing record and a chance now to add to the total. Out over the 30 to the 32, brought down by Mitchell Crossley. Wright has rushed for 200 plus yards already today. And we, we talk about turnovers, which Mark, you mentioned earlier, probably the key statistic in this football game, but Northwestern with only 10 turnovers in their first seven games, but 12 turnovers in the last four games. So late in the season, they've, they've kind of acquired that turnover bug. Bazine keeps it himself, has the first down, and speaking of turnovers, they put it on the ground again. Bowling Green has it near midfield at the 49. And now the official is going to come back and say he was down. Wow. Well, Bazine on the quarterback wrap play. We're going to get a great look at it right here. That football is out without any doubt. P.J. Carswell actually hitting the football with his knee. You can hear the fans here react. Or at least the Northwestern, the, the Bowling Green fans reacting. Mark, that was an awful call. No question about that. Bowling Green Falcon fans clad in orange voicing their displeasure. Bazinet forced to take off and drilled right on the sideline at the 47 by Mitch Hewitt. Let's take one more look. I don't think there's any doubt that that was a fumble. Well, Mark, I think it's pretty obvious right here. Obviously, Bazinet's knee is not down, and that football is out right there. Greg Brandon watching the replay on the Jumbotron. Watch his reaction. I don't blame putting, him, Mark. He's putting his arms up saying, you may as well rob me. <laughs> that was a stick-up. And the Conference USA officials definitely missed that call. And run the ball. Jason Wright brought down by Mitchell Crosley. Adding to that total. And the fans from Bowling Green still booing. 
That's okay if the fans boo, Mark, but it's important that these guys right here forget about that fumble. That fumble is over. Worry about this third down and two right here. Bowling Green spent seven weeks ranked in the national polls. Looking to get back there with a win here. Third down and two. Right. Rocked at the 49 by Mitch Hewitt. Short of the first down. Fourth down coming up. Do you go for it here, Bob, or do you I don't punt? think so, Mark. I think you punt this football, but amazing sometimes bad calls and negative things can inspire a defense or inspire a football team. It looks right here like that call on the fumble inspired this Bowling Green defense. That's the last play of the third quarter. And remember, the last time these two teams hooked up, Bowling Green was inspired by some fourth quarter magic to come back and win. Looking for that magic again when we come back. Here for the start of the fourth quarter, Northwestern leading by a field goal, set to punt here on fourth down. Huffman with his fourth punt of the day, a high spiral. Fair catch called for at the 19-yard line by Charles Sharon, and a good sign for the Wildcats when they're leading after three quarters. Randy Walker's team has enjoyed a lot of success, 17-2 and two with Northwestern. That is a remarkable statistic right there for Randy Walker. But one of those losses was against Bowling Green, one of those two. Josh Harrison, Bowling Green, Mark, I think it's extremely difficult for them to run the football. I really think the passing game is there for Bowling Green against this 3-3-5 man free type defense that Northwestern's play. Harris started to play lights out on the last drive. Flushed out of the pocket. Brought down from behind with a forearm from Pat Durr. Made it out to the 26-yard line. Got about six on the play. Well, there's no doubt that Josh Harris is unofficially but in my mind officially bowling greens tailback how difficult it is to stay in rush lanes and pat durr the linebacker comes in there and strips at that football but i do believe josh harris was down but mark turnovers in bowl games the last time bowling green played december 4th the last time northwestern played november 22nd you cannot scrimmage a lot in bowl preparation and you see because of that a hard time protecting that football pass complete out to the 34 and james hawkins with his second catch of the game let's take a look at our espn game track the young man from diamond bar california has played like a 24 karat diamond jason wright has set a bowl game record there have been a total of five turnovers in this ball game and maybe the most controversial was one that wasn't ruled a turnover. Bazinet fumbling. It was ruled by the officials that he was down. The replay clearly showing that he was not. First down and 10 for Harris at the 34 for Bowling Green. Going up top. And almost intercepted by Marvin Ward. And Mark, a great job by number 10, James Hawkins, of going up and keeping that from being interception by Marvin Ward. At some point, if you're on offense, you have to become a defensive player. We got a flag back at the 26. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. He's gonna move the ball all the way near midfield. Mark, you're gonna see Jarvis Adams. Wait a second. Lauren Howard comes in there late and pulls Josh Harris to the ground. Lauren, that wasn't very smart, and it really wasn't worth it, because if you're going to take a shot, take a shot. That was a little arm didn't, tackle didn't, right there. Didn't really hit him that hard. First and 10 as a result. Magner in motion. At some point, Bowling Green's going to go to Charles Sharon on the backside of this trip's formation, Mark. Incomplete pass. No flag on the play. There was a lot of contact between Hawkins and Ward. And, man, Greg Brandon is going to pop his next ring. We're going to look. Well, we get a chance to see Josh Harris point that finger. And Greg Brandon 
go after that Conference USA official. But here's what he saw right here. He's mugging him right there. Marvin Ward, number 31 on number 10, James Hawkins. And you got these fans at Ford Field in these orange shirts, Mark. They're upset, and they <laughs> should be. To no avail, though, on second and 10 now. Magner underneath made the catch. Falls forward to the 47-yard line where John Pickens makes the stop. It'll be third down. And about seven to go, six to go for Bowling Green. And they've not led all game. You're right, Mark, and they're scratching and clawing back in this, but I'm impressed with the Bowling Green turnout here at this football game. Greg Brandon emailed every one of Bowling Green's students, told them to tell their parents what I want for Christmas is a <laughs> ticket to the Motor City Bowl, and there's a bunch of them that have shown up. A bunch of them watching that replay Jumbotron you saw in the background a few moments ago. Magner with the first down at the 32-yard line, working on Dominic Price. A lot of people know about Palmer Alaska now, don't they? <laughs> and at some point, Dominic Price has to get outside alignment on Cole Magner and force him inside, Mark. He keeps playing inside leverage, which means he's taking away the inside, and Magner again just runs away and breaks to the outside. I still believe the passing game is there all day for Bowling Green, and at some point they're going to go to Charles Sharon down the field, number one. First down and 10 for Bowling Green from the 32. Harris. Catch made by Hawkins. And a Falcon first down all the way down to the 13-yard line. Hawkins with another catch and a 20-yard pickup. Hawkins, a three-year starter. He had 106 yards receiving against Purdue. You're going to see him in motion. He may have turned up a little bit early, but now it's zone coverage and just a crossing route, and he is wide open. As you see, Dominic Price, who's responsible for that flat area of the field in zone coverage. Oh. Hawkins got in behind him, Mark. Josh Harris had his coming out party against Northwestern a couple of years ago. Look, they'll do well again here. The pitch goes inside to Pope, who's brought down immediately after a gain of about one on the play. Josh Harris, married player and married to that young lady, I'll Tammy tell, Harris, his I'll, wife. I'll tell you what she Tammy. sees right now, Mark. She's an astute football fan. She sees Northwestern, a lot of man-free coverage, outnumbered them in the box to try to stop the running game. I don't think they can cover these receivers of Bowling Green, particularly Cole Magner, number 21, in this matchup with Dominic Price in man-to-man -man coverage again. Harris has thrown for over 300 yards into the end zone. Caught, touchdown, Sanders. Well, we asked the question, is Josh Harris accurate enough in the short to mid-range passing game, Mark? I think he's answering that here in the second half of this football game. It's money time, and Josh Harris has responded here in the second half. With 11.32 to go in the fourth quarter, Harris and Bowling Green with their first lead of the ball game now on the pass to Steve Sanders. His Bowling Green leading by four. Their first lead of the ball game with 11.32 to go here in the seventh edition of the Motor City Bowl. Josh Harris, six of seven on that last drive. Here's the kick. Right. Jason Wright on the return. Wright got the right stuff. Jason Wright at the five. Jelani Jordan made a touchdown saving stop. Hey, Mark, we've got some bad info when you say this guy's 4'6". He <laughs> plays faster than 4'6", and you have to love that he doesn't do a bunch of shake and bake. Right there, he just runs through the tackle. Keon Newsom downfield forces him back inside. Number 27, Jelani Jordan gets him on the field. 
This guy is a football player, Mark. Fascinating, loving it, saying, yeah, give me a short field to work with. We're going to get him drafted tonight. This guy's an <laughs> NFL football player. Well, he's making some money on these catches and these runs. Heron down to the one-yard line. It'll be second down and goal for Northwestern. What a tremendous swing. Fantastic ebb and flow in this ball game. Bowling Green scores a touchdown, and on the ensuing kickoff return, Northwestern takes the momentum right back. And special teams, another byproduct, Mark, which ties in with poor tackling in bowl games. But as I watch these bowl games unwind, tackling is a lost art in college football, whether on defense or special teams. Second down and goal. Noah Heron stopped up at the two-yard line. It'll be third down and goal. Newsom and Jason Morton, the two safeties in on the stop. Jason Wright getting a breather after the long run back. Third down and goal coming up. How tough is it having Wright on the sidelines, Bob? Well, I'll tell you what, I'd get him one of those oxygen masks. <laughs> I'd find a way to get him back in the football game. And right here on third down, Mark, we see that red line. That red line is what it's all about, particularly down here on this goal line. Did you, did you call a timeout to give Wright a breather and get I him think, back in? I think that is a great point, Mark, and I look for Northwestern to run an Both offenses starting to pick up the pace here in the second half. Looking at third down and goal now for Northwestern. On the option, Heron. Touchdown, Northwestern. Got a good block from Demetrius Eaton. And the Wildcats take the lead. And we mentioned option before we went to break. They did it a little bit different with Demetrius Eaton, number 42, in there at fullback. And this was all set up by that long kickoff return by Jason Wright. Took it all the way back to the six-yard line of Bowling Green. Heron with his second touchdown run of the game, and the Wildcats leading by a field goal with 10.01 to go in the fourth quarter. This battle between the Big Ten and the Mid-American Conference. And Northwestern doesn't really have a fullback, so right here, Demetrius, he, Eaton is a linebacker, and you're gonna watch him with the lead block right here out on the perimeter on number 19, Jason Morton. Bob, he just swallowed him up with that block. And a couple of roommates celebrating Wright and Heron. Two guys competing for the same job, but getting along and making it work. Great show of team chemistry and everybody buying into the team concept. Well, running back Kevin Jones will lead Virginia Tech as they face a Pac-10 team for the first time. Following us, coming up next, it's the Insight Bowl. Between California and Virginia Tech. It's part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2, the ins Insight Bowl. Can only hope that it's as exciting as this game. A lot of points. You think? A lot of <laughs> yards in these bowl games, Mark. Hey, there's a lot of defensive coordinators, Bob, not sleeping too well at night. That's a tough job anymore, the way teams are spreading the field. And what's difficult, Mark, it's hard to practice when you're a defensive team and your offense is a spread offense because you spend a lot of time spread out trying to defend formations and finesse running games. And then at some point, you have to go tackle in a football game. Well, you get a sneaky feeling that Josh Harris and the offense will be up to the challenge. Here's Lane on the return. Lane out of bounds just beyond the 30. And speaking of Harris, here's the other half, Tammy with Holly. Well, I'm here with Tammy, who was a five-time Big Ten champion, a three-time All-American. What advice have you given Josh about mentally being tough in a situation like this? Um, mainly, Josh doesn't really need my advice. He does a great job. He keeps his head on straight. He stays focused. And most importantly, we rely on God for everything. And, you know, we've really been prayerful this season, and it's really helped a lot. Tell me a little bit what it was like when he was out throwing into a net hour after hour this summer to get ready for this season. I missed him a lot this summer. He was gone a lot putting in extra work, but not only the net, but his receiver, receivers were out there with him all summer long, getting in extra reps and getting in some extra work together, and it's really helped because the team has 
been phenomenal this year. All right, thanks for your time, guys. Thanks, That's Tammy Harris. All right, Holly, and Magner with the reception, not beyond the 40 to the 41. I bet you Tammy could probably run a couple of out patterns for him and help him practice a little bit, Bob, huh? She's what? a former track athlete. I mean, come on. I'll tell you what, that's some great genetics. <laughs> I know they're just married, but you kind of <laughs> think about that firstborn down the road. and uh, No doubt. But right now, Mark, I think Cole Magner, number 21, Northwestern is going to have to defend him from outside in. Number 21 is eating them up right now, breaking away from coverage to the outside. They're going to have to funnel him inside a little bit. Magner in motion to the top of your screen. Harris on the rollout. And they strung it out well, brought him down at the 40, pardon me, the 37-yard line to McCarrigal. The leading tackler for that Wildcat defense. Under nine minutes to go now in the game. See Josh Harris rolling to his left right there. Lewis Castillo in pressure in the backfield. And Tim McGarrigal, this is one of the toughest players Northwestern has ever had. These coaches love him, Mark, as we look at this big third down right here. You better cover Cole Magner on the option route, breaking to the outside. That red line showing the line of scrimmage on third down. Complete. For the first down at the 47-yard line to Steve Sanders. And the Falcons looking for a late hit and a personal foul. Won't get Mark, it, though. It's a first down. I'm surprised they didn't get it right there. Obviously, it looked like the whistle had blown because the play had stopped. We look at number 12, Steve Sanders right here. He's down, his knee's down. And then he's just thrown to the ground right there by number 51, John Pickens. That's a 15-yard penalty. <laughs> you notice Sanders saw who it was. It was a big linebacker. He kind of backed off a little bit. First down and 10. Magner in motion to the bottom of your screen. They hand it off to Pope. And Pope is brought down immediately by John Pickens. Northwestern out of the Big Ten, but coming into this game as the underdog, 6-6 six and six overall. They turned their season around after defeating Indiana in overtime. Randy Walker, the head coach, said that things just started to click. We started to quote-unquote get it, and we were the beneficiaries of some great senior leadership. Nine seniors in all playing in, the, in their last game here for Northwestern. Second down and ten. Underneath complete. Boy, Harris just picking them apart underneath. Sharon making the catch that time. Josh Harris started off a little shaky to begin the game, had an interception, actually had a couple in the first half. But since that time, has started to look much better here. Magner with the touchdown catch. Got another one right there. That was Steve Sanders. And in the second half, he has been a different quarterback. And Mark, it's amazing in these spread offenses how the quarterback is such a huge factor on every single play. It's not like he ever just hands it off to the tailback. Third and one, Harris keeps it himself. Has the first down and then some at the 31. Josh Harris went into the pack and somehow came out on the other side. And really, Northwestern, Mark, had it defended pretty well. You look right here. Josh Harris just cuts back, and on the backside, Barry Cofield, 67, had a shot at him. But Josh Harris came into the game fourth in the nation in total offense at 332 yards a game. Every play revolves around the quarterback even more in a spread offense than it does a conventional offense, Mark. First down and 10. A flag thrown as his intended receiver, Sharon, was ridden out of bounds by Marquise Cole. Well, we might have a pass interference here, though. Which would be an automatic first down for Bowling Green. It's exactly what it is. And Maurice Cole, number 20, locked on Charles Sharon, number one. Mark, what he did, he just pinned him up against the sideline and ran him out of bounds. I think it was an excellent call right there. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty on 
automatic first down. We're here in Detroit, Michigan for the seventh edition of the Motor City Bowl. It's the Big Ten against the Mid-American Conference, the first time they've gotten a Big Ten team to come to this game. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. These two teams have met once before, and Bowling Green won that in a shootout 43-42 to a couple of years ago. That courtesy provided by some fourth-quarter heroics. And quarterback Josh Harris, first down and 10. Ball at the 16. Pope brought down immediately. Wouldn't be surprised to see these two teams go over 1,000 yards combined for the game, Bob. Mark, you're yards. right. And if it wasn't for the turnovers, this would be a tremendously high-scoring football game. We look how close and balanced these two offenses are, but you notice the tailback in this football game for Bowling Green, not much of a factor. It's all about Josh Harris either running the football or throwing the football. Northwestern's taking the tailback out of the game for Bowling Green. On second down and 10. We're going to get man-to-man -man blitz coverage right here, Mark. Harris underneath again, has a man. It'll be first down and goal. McGrady with the catch. Boy, Josh Harris showing a lot of touch on those intermediate passes. McGrady, you're going to see him come across the field against man-to-man -man coverage. Northwestern turned him loose that time. And right now, Northwestern really struggling, Mark, with this Bowling Green passing game. Just kind of nickel and diming them to death, Bob. First down and goal. Harris has completed 36 passes, a bowl record. Into the end zone, incomplete. Intended for McGrady. He was covered by Cole. It'll be second down and goal. And we always talk every week about red zone offenses and their proficiency inside the red zone. And it's difficult, Mark, for a couple reasons. Number one, obviously the field is not stretched vertically as much as it is when you're up the field because of the end line. But also, these offensive linemen, which are really different, they're down here in two-point stances, never get in a three-point stance and really run off the football. So the dynamics of this whole thing changes as you see those offensive linemen staying in that two-point stance. Empty, no back Second on the two-yard line. Second and goal. Harris, Bob, brought down immediately. It'll be third down and goal. They spread the field out, and uh, his wife, Tammy, watching nervously. Her husband's team down by a field goal with 4.36 to go in the game. Big call coming up for Brick Bend. Brent. Well, you know one thing. Number five, Josh Harris, going to be the focal point of this call right here, Mark. Again, they go empty, no backs. Trying to spread Northwestern out. Northwestern in man-to-man -man coverage. 11th play of the Bowling Green Drive. Touchdown, Magner! Josh Harris does it again. And again, forced Cole Magner inside. He keeps running away from defenders. Here they have him matched up on the linebacker right here again, Mark. I'm inside leverage. He just keeps breaking away. And you're going to see an excellent catch right there. That time locked up on Braden Jones, but you better funnel him in. He's killing you running to the sideline. Bowling Green up four, 28 to 24. Josh Harris does it again, and just call Cole Magner 7-11, because he is open all day long. His second touchdown catch of the game, and the Falcons out of the Mid-American Conference. Make it a statement. Tammy Harris loves SPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Motor City Bowl. Brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? By Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. And by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good.
Back in the city of Detroit, built on the backbone of the automotive industry. A couple of teams right now firing on all cylinders. The offense is kicking in. Four-point lead for Bowling Green in the last two drives have resulted in touchdown scores. And Mark kicked this football away from number 18, Jason Wright, and they do. And they squib it down to the 17. That's Noah Heron. Why would you kick it away from Jason Wright? Well, why not? He's run the ball well. He's set a bowl record with over 200 yards rushing, including a 77-yard bolt into the end zone early in the second half. That set the tone in the third quarter. He has a total of 237 yards on the ground, and this kickoff return on the last offensive sequence which led to a touchdown, took it all the way back to the five. First down and 10. On the jailbreak screen, Kunle Patrick makes the catch and is brought down immediately by Reynolds. And Mark, we look at Jason Wright's numbers. Let me make this point. People say there's too many bowl games. I disagree. If there was a playoff system, people wouldn't have the chance across this country to see number 18, Jason Wright. It's all about people getting a chance to see great players. I don't care if he plays on a 6-6 on a six six football team. This is a heck of a football player that people across the country ought to enjoy watching. I feel you on that. Here's Heron over the 20, brought down at the 23-yard line by Runnels again. You talk about Northwestern and the fact that they're 6-6, six and six, Bob, but five of the six losses of theirs this year were against teams in the top 25. It's definitely a mitigating circumstance. Exactly, Mark, and they beat Wisconsin, Penn State, and Illinois late in the football season. But you know what? Right now, if they're going to win a seventh game, Brett Bazinet has to make a play in the passing game. They cannot run the football here on third and ten. He's got to throw it, and they've got to catch it right here, and they've struggled. The red line, the line of scrimmage on third down. Bazinet sacked back at the nine-yard line by Keon Newsom. That's the first sack today for Bowling Green's defense. I'll tell you what, those guys are getting after it up there. <laughs> I want to throw them in. <laughs> but Keon Newsom from safety to corner. Now he's a linebacker, Mark, coming on the blitz. Huffman punting from the shadows of his own goalposts. Their catch at the 47-yard line called by Sharon. Bowling Green with a four-point lead. 2.07 to go in the fourth quarter. Bowling Green coming in at 10-3, champions of the Western Division in the Mid-American Conference. Two of those losses were to highly ranked Miami, Ohio. They've beaten some impressive teams this year, Northern Illinois, as well as Purdue. And our Capital One players of the game, Jason Wright, with 336 all-purpose yards, over 230 yards on the ground, and Josh Harris... And the meter's still running for Harris. Let me tell you something <laughs> else. They might be the two players of the game because of statistics, but Keon Newsom, as a defensive player, Mark, has done a lot of good things, as has Cole Magner making some big catches. So a lot of stars in this game today. On first down and 10, Josh Harris. The clock is ally right now. Going to take it on a predetermined run and brought down from behind. And forget about handing that ball to the tailback. <laughs> Snap it to your tailback. Newsom, who caused a fumble on Jason Wright earlier in the game, at a key juncture. Might be a little bit too early to start mugging. We'll be right back after this. Washington State looks to head coach of Bowling Green trying to build upon the success laid down by Urban Meyer, the former head coach of Bowling Green, second down and 10. Falcons with a four-point lead. And it looks different in the shotgun late in the game trying to run the clock out, but that's what they do. Harris keeps it himself, stopped up again by Castillo. And it'll be third down. Clock working against Northwestern. We got a timeout on the field, and... Time to tell you about a little more football coming up NFL style. Double coverage weekend starting tomorrow with Donovan McNabb and the Philadelphia Eagles 
looking to win the NFC East when they visit the Redskins Sunday. Jamal Lewis will try and surpass Eric Dickerson's single season rushing record. Needs 154 yards against the Steelers. Both games also available in high definition on ESPN HD. All time winding down. Uh, Northwestern out of timeouts, Bob, and trailing by four points. Got to get the ball back. Got to score. What do you do? Well, first of all, if you're Bowling Green, run the football right here. Northwestern with no timeouts. It'll take it down to about a minute left in the football game. Then you punt it and you play defense. It's a four-point game. If you're Northwestern, you have no choice. I mean, you come up and you play everybody in the box. You try to defend Josh Harris running the football right here. I doubt very much that Greg Brandon will throw the football, particularly after watching that Hawaii-Houston game last <laughs> night when June Jones threw it late in the game. Uh, that Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, uh, quite the shootout. But Mark, let's give credit to this Motor City Bowl. 51,000 people here today, really impressed with the turnout. Also impressed with this facility here at Ford Field. Uh, this has been an outstanding football. This is a bowl game strictly on the way up right now. Third down and eight. The Bowling Green program on the way up as well. Harris converts on third down at the 21 to Sanders. And that is a dagger to the heart of Northwestern. Great touch pass by employee number five, Josh Harris. And Mark, one last time we see right here, man-to-man -man coverage, the defensive back playing inside technique, and the receiver is going to run away from him to the corner, and a poor job right there by Dominic Price. And Steve Sanders just iced it right there. Give Greg Brandon credit. Instead of running the football, taking it down to a minute left in the game, he threw the football, shows the confidence he has in Josh Harris. Josh Harris had an outstanding season last year for Bowling Green, but because they didn't win the West Division, he was somewhat overlooked. Still on his feet right here and falling at the 27-yard line, but people certainly know who number five in Orange is this year. He is one of the premier quarterbacks in the entire country, and for the Mac, boy, what a year for quarterbacks, Roethlisberger and Harris. And with the game on the line, Josh Harris marked 12 for 14 passing in the fourth quarter. Northwestern, a good defensive plan, in my opinion, making Josh Harris throw the football to beat them. But you know what? Josh Harris did throw the football and did beat them. Eventually warming up in the second half. Northwestern has no timeouts remaining. And Bowling Green looking to improve to 11 and 3 on the season. A very successful season for first year head coach Greg Brandon, who might get an orange, grape, or raspberry Gatorade shower. Take your flavor, take your pick. <laughs> I think it was just water, Bob. Mark, you mentioned it, another notch in the holster for the MAC Conference. Outstanding win. I think Northwestern is an improving team. Only nine seniors back next year. Give Northwestern credit. They played well today, but Bowling Green comes in there and wins it, not only for themselves, but for the MAC Conference. In front of 51,000 plus here in Detroit, Tammy Harris, the wife of quarterback Josh Harris, Greg Brandon among the Bowling Green supporters, celebrated. As the Brain Trust meet at head field, at midfield. Wright had an outstanding game. And Holly Rowe is standing by with the winning coach, Coach Brent. Coach, you said your team deserved to be in this game. What does this win prove? Well, it proves we deserve to be in this game because we can play with the big boys. You know, we beat Purdue, we beat Northwestern, we took Ohio State to the wire. We, we had a great season, and I'm so proud of my seniors in this football team. They fought to the end and won this game. What were you thinking when you entered the fourth quarter behind? That we had to catch up. I mean, <laughs> we, we, we never, we never, there was any doubt. No doubt creeps in. It was who believed the longest that was going to win this game, and we believed the longest. What did Josh Harris do today that made him even more special? 
everything that he always does. Just made plays left and right, ran the offense, improvised, and, uh, you know, he's a great player, and, and we're going to miss him. He, he's a great player, a great human being, too. All right, thanks very much. Congratulations. All right, I'm Holly. trying to find Josh. And a successful season it was for Bowling Green, and another quarterback has a fantastic game in the postseason, in the bowl season. We've seen so many of them. Roethlisberger, a game we did, Bob, in the GMAC Bowl, threw for 376 yards, four touchdowns. Timmy Chang in the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl last night, five touchdowns. And Josh Harris among that elite list with three touchdowns and almost 400 yards passing today and over 400 yards of total offense for the Bowling Green Falcons, the victorious team. And Mark, to put it in perspective, both these teams, it's a long season. They start August 5th with preseason practice. Neither team really goes home for the summer, so they don't get a break. This has been a heck of a year for both these teams. Both teams ought to be proud of this effort. And Holly's standing by with our star of the game. Josh, what changed in the second half that allowed your offense to get rolling? I think that we just kind of settled down and, you know, uh, stayed patient and uh, kept believing in the offense. You know, our defense played an awesome game, you know, uh, gave up some big plays, but when it came down to it, they saved us and, and gave us some time. And, uh, you know, we got a great coaching staff and we figured things out. As much as Northwestern was able to run the ball, it didn't seem like your sideline ever had a sense of panic. How were you able to stay so calm? Because we're a good football team, you know, and good football teams stay poised in pressure situations. You're going to have, you're going to have uh, adversity strike in every game, and, and, the, and the team that handles it the best is the team that's going to win. When Northwestern took away your running game, you were forced to sit back and pass. How were you able to get that done? Uh, you know, a great job by the guys up front, you know, protecting those big, strong guys for Northwestern. You know, they're not easy guys to block, uh, you know, but we got guys that, that we believe in ourselves and we believe in this system, and, um, you know, we just were able to make the plays. What does this win say about Bowling Green and the MAC? Uh, I mean, I hope that it says uh, a lot. I hope that it says that the MAC is able to compete. I hope that it says that uh, Bowling Green is a, is a great football team. I hope that it means that in the future the MAC will get more bowl games. All right, congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank Mark? Thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot, Holly. Four years ago, Josh Harris came to the door. The coaches demanded adamantly that he play quarterback and nothing else. He played running back for the first few games, and then quarterback the final game of his freshman season and has been onward and upward ever since. Coming up next, it's the Inside Bowl as Virginia Tech takes on California. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For the gang, I'm Mark Jones. Right now, let's go back to Reese in the studio. Okay, Mark, and we will get you out to the desert for Virginia Tech in California in just a little bit. Trev Alberts, Mark May here with me, and guys, you know, in this bowl season so far, the six previous winners in bowl games that averaged 392 yards passing. Bowling Green just about hit the number at 386. It's been all about offense. And Josh Harris, I don't know how you can say enough things about him as a quarterback. And so many times you see quarterbacks have the ability to sit back in the pocket, read defenses, and deliver. I don't know, Mark, that I've ever seen a guy who has the ability to move outside the pocket, running to his left, throwing across his body. Unbelievable.